Welcome to Nismo TV, and we're live here from the Nismo Bunker for the Super Streaming Weekend. I'm Sam Collins. I'm joined by Rob Barf in the studio. And coming up, we have the Suzuka 300 kilometers race, but that's not all this weekend. Hot on the heels of the finish of the race at Suzuka at 3 o'clock UK time, local time, and that's 4 o'clock European time. We have the Blancpain Endurance Series from Silverstone. And on top of that, in the evening at 10 past 8 UK time, 10 past 9 at European time, it's the Micro Cup live and in English and uninterrupted all here on Nismo TV. But first things first, let's talk about Suzuka. Rob, you have raced in Super GT at Suzuka. Tell us about the track. It's Sam, it's just epic. Um, it, it's fast, it's flowing, it has a history, like Monza that you can feel when you're there. It's a really special place. And um, the new format of the sprint event, it's going to be full on round there for uh, 52 laps. Yeah, it's, it's a 300 kilometer race, not the usual 1,000 kilometer distance, which is what you see in Super GT normally in, uh, in the season. But Suzuka has shortened the race off for this year for the first time. It will now be a regular 300-kilometer sprint event, a Grand Prix race distance. And Formula One lap times we're going to be talking about a little bit later on. But first, let's take a look back at what happened last time out at Fuji Speedway. And there was a bit of a thriller at that other of Japan's great old tracks. There were some people waving and talking in the grandstand. And a fantastic start here. If you look at, look at the number 23 Motul Ortec GTR, there in third position, it was it was JP Oliveira at the wheel of that off the start line, and he just put in a stellar opening lap. That's why that guy's cheering, and a fantastic bit of onboard. We'll have a little bit more of a look of that how he managed to get into the lead by that point of the race. But with the long straight at Fuji Speedway, huge um, opportunity to slipstream and draft your way into or through the field. Frankly, and it happened up and down the grid with GT500 and GT300. We'll explain those two classes little bit later on if you haven't watched Super GT before. But Rob, this was quite a race, wasn't it? It was, and the blue car we're looking at there, the Jan Mardenborough in the Calsonic uh, Nismo GTR, uh, was in the thick of the action throughout, Sam. He was uh, really aggressively pushing on, and yeah, the fans waved their flags, and the team manager was delighted to see the, uh, the, the, the way that car carved its way up through the field. Now, we've got some fantastic content I mean, that's more than team manager. I mean, that is the, the fastest man in Japan. <laughs> there we uh, go. If you don't understand that reference, stay tuned to Nismo TV. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. We want to have all your comments in the chat and uh, on all the videos. But we've got fantastic in-depth behind-the-scenes content from some of these guys at these races as well. Fantastic move around the outside there for the Nissan GTR, putting it on Hatsune Miku and disappearing off into the distance. That was uh, Hiranaka, fantastic, and they're very happy about that. Mr. Ben Benden was also quite happy because at uh, the Motor Law Tech number 23, the GTR there, taking its first, well, taking the championship lead at Fuji yeah, Speedway. Taking, no. the, taking the championship lead, but of course picking up some weight handicap that's going to be carried into this round here this morning at, uh, at Suzuka. And now in Super GT, there is success ballast, so it's very. it depends on how much you put into, how many points you get, you get different like, weights, so you get fantastic victory there for the number 23 now that first lap we commented on it a little bit Ronnie Cinturelli behind the wheel now he just went off like well he was on a mission he literally was 500 mile race but it wasn't like he knew it was a 500 mile race so I thought we could take a little bit more of a detail now you have raced with I think you've raced with what Ronnie at some point yeah 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 so I want Similar you to, Rob, to tell us what's going on in his mind as we go through Ronnie Cinturelli's Onboard start lap. You can actually watch the full race elsewhere on Nismo TV from this viewpoint, but we have a fantastic onboard from that first lap from Ronnie Contrelli. Rob, you're going to talk us through this. So, if you watch in the distance above the Zentsarumo car, you can see the lights. If you look to the left of the screen, you can see the uh, car behind Ronnie uh, in his wing mirror, and that car disappears, and he's immediately on the back of the Lexus up ahead. Um, looks first left, then looks the right, breaks incredibly late and moves from third up to second. Um, just a brilliant start all round, but uh, he's not happy just to sit there. He immediately puts lots of pressure on the Zentsarumo, lines him up nicely uh, as they come down into turn three here. 
takes a slightly more accurate apex, gets a terrific run out, puts him under pressure around the long turn four. They then rise up the mountains, iconic mountains in the distance there. He shows him the car down the inside here, starts to put him under pressure and just continues this till he makes his move down at the bottom of the hill as they come into the final kind of sector. So Ronnie's really getting himself psyched up and round the outside for the race lead was just an amazing move. As we go, as we look around that, he finishes that lap. I mean, went on to win the race after that. The Super GT is a fantastic marriage of technology and just action. It's, it's, it is that innovation that excites that Nissan like to talk about. But I mean, they really do mean it here. And that's that's what we're bringing you here live on Nismo TV. Now, if you're wondering why we're a little bit late on for the Super 300 kilometers, that's not down to us here at Nismo TV. There was some sort of power failure or timing system failure at Suzuka. And uh, everything started a little bit later than scheduled. But we will be bringing you all of the live action. But that action all got underway yesterday with some fan and Jan Mardenborough gave us a little bit of an insight of what it was like at Suzuka in qualifying and free practice and what the famous no the famous number twelve blue car was like on this well very famous track. It's iconic, isn't it? Let's hear from Jan. Good job in uh, Q1, P6. I mean, the Hondas were very fast today, but uh, it looked like you squeezed the maximum out. We didn't have much information coming into this race. The, our previous test was not great. So, um, you know, we found some good settings with our engineer and uh, the lap was, uh, was okay. But uh, for Daiki set, Daiki's um, Q2, which was again great, uh, we changed the car a lot, and uh, we have a good, a good, car, good qualifying car, and we have a good idea for the race. So um, I just tried to make Q2, and uh, yeah, his best our best qualifying position so far. So good. If you overtake as many cars as you did in Fuji, uh, you're looking good. But you have a good race car for tomorrow. Yes, we do. So. Daiki Sasaki wasn't very talkative, was he? <laughs> <laughs> Daiki Wolf there, Daiki Sasaki, the, the other driver of the number 12 uh, Calsonic or well, Impul Blue Car. Uh, not, not really giving us a great insight, but I think maybe we got an edited version of that interview in English. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, very good. Always good to hear from Jan. Um, and looking for a terrific run from him this afternoon. Uh, he's running a relatively light car, has qualified well up the field, and they'll be looking to... Um, capitalise upon the, that momentum that they had in the latter half of the um, Fuji race. Uh, Super GT, you know, you mentioned the lighter car because there's a success ballast formula. So it's one kilo for every point or uh, two kilos for every point. It's two kilos for two every kilos point. Two kilos for every point, yes. So you see that they, and the cars get up to a certain amount of ballast on the car. And then if you're in GT500, the premier class, you get a fuel flow restriction as well. Oh, which is just a killer from a driver's perspective. The fuel flow restriction will just limit the amount of oomph you have. The car will still produce ultimately a similar amount of horsepower, but it's the way the car delivers the torque. These turbocharged engines, they just get strangled ever so slightly. And um, I think we'll see the fuel flow restriction coming into play because the 23 car has got that first stage now of the fuel flow restriction on the long uphill sweep to spoon curve and down the two long straights at Suzuka, the one down into turn one and the one down to the 130R. And unlike Formula One and the World Endurance Championship, the fuel flow limitation is not governed by a limiter it's an actual restrictor it's a mechanical device that stops yeah. that from happening so you'll see that that doesn't apply in the gt300 category and we'll talk about the class differences during the race i think because we always do but two liter turbocharged engines in all the gt500 cars looking at about 650 to 700 horsepower from those two liter turbocharged engines and what does that mean in terms of lap times well in 1988 a man called thierry bootson drove his benetton ford b18 b188 around Suzuka circuit to qualify 10th on the grid. It was a good lap. It was a 144.6. Now, the circuit's changed slightly over the years. There's been a reprofiling of Degna curves and a reprofiling of the final chicane, but generally the circuit's about the same. The pole position time here for the Suzuka 300 kilometers was quicker than Thierry Bootson, and the pole car in GT500 would have qualified 10th on the grid. 
for the 1988 Japanese Grand Prix. Which is just crazy, isn't it? You think of the difference in weight, the difference in aerodynamics. We're looking at massive, massive shattering levels of performance now from the GT500 cars. They are almost now the quickest ever sports car to race around Suzuka. If they can go half a second quicker, they will be the quickest ever sports car category to visit the circuit in its history. And it's been open since the early 1960s. Phenomenal. And that's absolutely stunning stuff. Well, we can have a look at what happened in qualifying across both categories, GT500 and GT300. Uh, this took place yesterday. And, uh, well, there you can see it, a bit windy at Suzuka Circuit. Suzuka is located just south, a little way south, about 40 minutes south on the train from Nagoya. There is the rear wing on the number 23. It, Mi Prefecture, home of some very famous ninjas. And that is why there is a little ninja motif on the rear wing end plate of the number 23 Nissan GTR GT500. They're changing those little graphics for each race, I've noticed. So it's uh, at Fuji Speedway with the little mountain motif. And I wonder what they're going to have next time out in Thailand. Who knows? Well, here's, here's a man who knows how to go get this car around the track very quickly. Quickest of all of the Nissan GTR GT500 drivers was Jan Mardenborough. He was a bedroom gamer once upon a time. Of course, Jan, a product of the GT Academy and, uh, yeah, uh, now firmly established as this man is in the factory roster. We're riding with Ronnie Kintarelli coming uh, up to the very, very the highest point of the uh, circuit at the Spoon Curve. Well, Jan very much is still a bedroom gamer. Um, having been in his bedroom <laughs> I, I beg your pardon <laughs> I have where's this heading only because he wanted to show me his gaming setup when we oh, went around okay. to do some okay. interviews which you can see elsewhere on Nismo TV and you can actually see that gaming setup that he does use but he is still very much an active gamer he goes online and plays as himself on various online games and uh, it's it's really interesting to see that he still uses computer games to, to learn the circuits and stay quick in yeah, his car well stay sharp Daiki Sasaki and Jan Mardenborough managed to get their car up to what is an impressive sixth position. Now, why sixth impressive? Because there is a weight handicap on this. And we can see as Jan looks, well, not unhappy with the performance of the car, but moderately happy. And uh, we'll be going live to the track at Suzuka momentarily. But come on, let's have some predictions. Um... I predict the 23 car won't win uh, with its fuel flow restriction. We're looking just to capitalise uh, and uh, on the last race win and um, maybe pick up a few points going into the midsummer break. Um, I think we're probably going to be looking at a Honda victory. Uh, the Hondas are running very light. The circuit is run uh, and owned by Honda. I think the first sector, the sweeping S's behind the pits will suit the mid-engine configuration of the Honda NSX. Um, and in GT300, well, on paper, the circuit should suit the uh, more traditional Japanese GT, uh, Super GT style cars, the Jap 300 cars. Um, but the um, looking at the championship table, the FIA GT3 cars are right in the mix as well. So um, I think in GT500, we've got to watch the Hondas. And in GT300, anything could happen. Well, you mentioned that Honda owns the circuit. Now, here's a little bit of a technical. It's a technical conspiracy theory, shall we say. The Hondas have proved very strong. As we, when we look at the starting grid, you'll see that in a, in a minute or so. But it's, the Hondas have gone very, very well in qualifying. The best qualifying we've seen from Honda in GT500 since this rule set was introduced. Now, every single car in Super GT has to run on petrol that you buy from the pumps at the circuit. Correct. Honda owns the circuit. Honda controls what goes into those petrol pumps. Oh. That's lovely. That's got more than a whiff of conspiracy theory. Yeah, Sam. Indeed, That's... it does, doesn't it? It's it's a, it's a nice it's a nice one. Yeah, very good. I hadn't thought of that. That was very yeah very pertinent. But um, yeah, the uh, Honda uh, have owned the track since 1962. It was a test track initially. The first thousand k race there was in 1966, and uh, yeah, almost six kilometres. Narrow, challenging, and yeah, really, really looking forward to uh, what will be. A 52-lap flat-out sprint race around this iconic figure of eight track. Well, let's look at that starting grid right now as we go live to Suzuka for this 300-kilometer race in Mi Prefecture. The first Suzuka 300 in Super GT, and it's the Fan Festival. Nice weather 
bit chilly, but 21 degrees, but a little bit of wind blowing across the circuit. There we go, Mi Prefecture, famous for those ninjas. It's on the old, uh, I forget the name of the old uh, samurai trail that runs from Tokyo to the south of the country along the coastline. And you can look out from the main grandstand out to sea. Industrial town is Suzuka, there's car factories and oil terminals. Not the most picturesque place in Japan, but one of the greatest race circuits in the world without a shadow of a doubt. I believe it was designed by John Hugenholtz, who did Zandvoort. But let's have a look at that starting grid as it comes up on pole position. It is the Arta NSX with that new lap record quicker than a Formula One car in the 1980s. Jensen Button starts second on the grid, another Honda. Third is the Kahin NSX. Kagure starts from third. Keeper Tom's, uh, the Keeper Tom's Lexus in fourth is the first of the Lexus cars. Then the Epson Modulo NSX, massive Honda showing. First of the Nissan's there, we saw Jan Mardenbra. He'll start from sixth position alongside him, Hideke Muto, in, number, in seventh position in Motul Mugen NSX. Then the AU Tom's LC500, that's the white and yellow, orange and yellow, white car. The Wed Sport Advan LC500, a very colourful car in ninth. Tenth position is the Zentsurumo LC500 Lexus. Forum Engineering, 11th position. JP Oliveira starts that car in its Yokohama tyres. The Craft Sports white car, Satoshi Yasumotoyama, starts in 12th. Alongside Heike Kovalainen in 13th position in the Denso Saad LC500. The Wacos, the Wacos LC500. It's got James Rossiter in it, who swapped cars for this race, filling in for another driver. And the Motul Ortec GTR with 52 kilos of ballast rounds out the GT500 grid. In GT300, though, as Barfi said at the top of the show, is going to look slightly different. The, uh, the Lexus RCF GT3, the K-Tunes car, is alongside the Hoppy MC86, the first of the carbon fiber monocoque chassis, then Hatsune Miku in third position. The Subaru BRZ is the first of the JAF GT300 cars with its flat four boxer engine. Then the Cintium, Cintium LM Corsa RCF GT3 in fifth. Sixth position is the Leon AMG. Mercedes, then the D-Station Porsche in 7th, alongside that is the Up Garage 86 in 8th position. Ninth position is the Hitsumamiya Audi R8 LMS, then the first of the Honda NSX GT3s in 10th position. The Gainer, Tanax AAA GTR number 11, Hoshina and Yoshido, that's the new spec Nissan GTR GT3 alongside the Golf Porsche in 12th. The run-up GTR is in 13th position and the Minica Lamborghini in 14th. The Taisan R8 Fukushima car is in 15th alongside the other of the Gainer Tanax GTRs in 16th position. Slightly disappointing for them. Uh, very competitive car, but 34 kilos of ballast on that. The Max Aiken GT86 in 17th. Then the Legal Frontier Lamborghini GT3. Kimio Sato starts that in 18th. Then the Toyota Prius. Really disappointing for them starting at 19th. Sean Walking Show, follower of this program, in at 20th in the BMW, very orange BMW. Koki Saga, disappointed to start in 21st position in the other of the two Prius cars. First time ever, I think, that it started behind its team car. 22nd position is the EXE AMG GT3, then the Saitama Toyo Pet Mark X Toyota, one of those carbon fiber cars in 23rd. Good position for them. Yuji Ide starts the Bentley in 24th, and the Car Guy NSX GT3 in 25th. The Shokumu GTR, 26th position, Richard Bradley starts that. 27th is the Thai. Lexus GT3, 28th position is the RQ's AMG GT3, and rounding out the field in a GT300 is the Lotus Evora. Now they had some problems in qualifying and they wrecked the car. The car is on the grid and is back in good condition. Keep an eye on that. I don't think they're going to change tyres in the race. There's a prediction. Tyre strategy in a 300 kilometer race at Suzuka is going to be crucial and I think it's your right front with those long corners, and particularly the first sector with the snake, that famous snake, it's going to be really different, difficult to get through. Track temperature of 34 degrees, air temperature of 21 degrees, feels like 21. It's not going to rain. It's going to be a nice day out in spring or early summer conditions in Mi Prefecture. 34 degrees is a kind temperature um, for the tyres. So, yeah, we could be looking at, uh, at the pit stop strategy. If you can spend just a moment less time stationary in the pits, that could be the defining factor. Now, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, don't just do this right now. Type in nismo.tv into your browser and join us on the Nismo TV channel for the full live coverage. We're just about to get the national anthem on the grid. There they go. 
That was short. <laughs> it really was, wasn't it? That wasn't the national anthem. They, they, maybe they can't find it. Or well, we're going to get the opening declaration, perhaps from the Mr. Orange Jacket of the Art of Autobacks Company. In his role as Master of Ceremonies, uh, we should be getting the national anthem, but it hasn't started yet. And there's a man in orange running down the starting grid. You see the police motorcycles all out there, so they're all standing to attention. And here we go for the national anthem. I do like the Japanese national anthem. It's very, very sort of restful. Yeah, it's it's a very good national anthem. Well, if you're looking forward to this fantastic action, there is the championship points. Nismo leading the drivers' championship in GT500. If you're liking this action, looking forward to a great race, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Nismo TV for some more fantastic content. And follow us on all of the usual social media channels: the Insta thing, the Twitter, the Facebook, and all at Nismo. Fantastic stuff. And we're going to get the opening declaration. There's some people waving. Are you ready? He says in English. I'm ready. Oh, there, there's that very short. It's a little trumpety fanfare thing, isn't it? Oh, look, it's, it's getting him revved up. Uh, that's a new That's a new feature, isn't it, for, for Super GT? The, the random electro trumpet from the 1980s computer games. Retro's the way forward. It's quite a retro track, this, but I walked it um, a few months ago, and it's uh, it's longer than you think it is, and steeper than you think it is. I uh, when I first first went there, I walked the circuit, and I was like, wow, this this looks like Alton Park. It's got sort of that sort of whiff of um, tighter radius turns, old school curbs. It's narrower than you think, and yeah, just wonderful. So remember, Sam, this is the first 300 kilometer race since 2010. Starting at second position on the race is a chap who knows this track quite quite well, Benson Jutton. Yeah, Jensen Button, uh, very quick here in pre-season testing, and uh, his teammate is also particularly rapid round here as well. He won the uh, Super Formula race here just a few weeks ago, so um, yeah, Jensen Button uh, looking to have a, a good result starting from the front row of the grid in the number 100 Honda. Then the mid-engine Hondas, all of the other GT500 cars are front-engine rear-wheel drive. The Honda is a mid-engine car. Here's Mr. Orange Jacket for his Master of Ceremonies role. He's uh, from the Arta Autobax company, which is kind of like a mega Napa or mega Halford. And he's saying, Welcome to the Auto Autobax Super GT Championship live from Suzuka. 300 kilometers, fan festival. You're very welcome to come along. Please enjoy it. Thank you very much. That's what he said. I, I even got a little bit of that in my very limited uh, Japanese. And uh, oh, I learned my Japanese from Yan. There we go. The cars are on the starting grid. The grid is clear. And we will see this field of monsters. Oh, there it is again. I love it. Uh, as has already been mentioned in the chat, keep the chat going. We are watching the chat as well. Um, that would make a fantastic ringtone. If you're sitting on the train, perhaps on the way home from work, and um, you could hear the you could hear the, the ringtone going off, you know you've got a Super GT fan somewhere else on that train. <laughs> <laughs> um, we seem to have subtitles on my screen. I didn't know we had subtitles. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased that somebody somewhere is going for the effort of typing in our, our, our quality commentary. It's the, it's the brilliant. So Look at that range of emergency vehicles behind. You've got the first response operation. You've got what looks to be like a Honda Civic-y sort of thing. And then we're looking at the back of the grid, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking at the motorbikes at the front, and uh, Sam's looking at the back. And, yeah, there's a, a whole variety, uh, but not that neatly lined up as well. Or maybe it's just the angle that we're looking at. So there's the green lights, the start of the, uh, 
the parade lap that will lead in then into the formation lap and that will then lead into the rolling start and a, a shorter front straight here at Suzuka than uh, than at Fuji so we won't have to wait that long for the lights to go out now you will see two starts here in Super GT there is two races going on and they rarely declare the results as a single race result there are two entirely separate races one for the GT500 cars those are the cars you can see on screen right now two litre turbocharged works cars carbon fibre monocoque everything built to the same technical regulations as the DTM but with a whole load more power and grip than the German cars have ever managed to produce. Then at the GT300 category which is mainly made up of FIA GT3 specification cars exactly the same as you will see at Silverstone live on Nismo TV later today however it is a tyre war championship so it's not balanced performance on the different tyres it's a tyre war series and you'll also see the JAF GT300 cars. They're based on production cars like the Toyota Prius and the Subaru BRZ, but with a huge amount of modification to the point they're barely recognisable. But they are still road cars under the bodywork. And then the mother chassis cars, which have no relation to the road cars whatsoever. Carbon fibre monocoques. I think maybe the Lotus uses the badge and the headlight cluster from the real road car, and that's it. And they all have uh, four and a half litre V8 normally aspirated engines, which are incredibly similar. And there is one of those Jaff GT300 cars, and it is the Toyota Prius that just when seems you thought, to not want to go. Just when you thought things would get no worse for the uh, Prius. So, unfortunately, he's let the whole field pass. So, even though he will, um, if he's uh, rectified the problem, if he will be able to uh, catch the field, he'll have to remain at the back and then um, start from there. He won't be able to retake his position. There are two Toyota Priuses, or Prii, in this race, and that is the faster of the two from qualifying, the number 30 car. However, normally the number 30 is slower than the number 31, which has had a bad qualifying session. As yeah, uh, down in 19th and 21st position on the uh, in the GT300 grid. It's a super Impreza police car there. And a Toyota. I think it's a Lexus there. And there's some Hondas. Yeah, Honda 1, 2, 3. And the home track, the management will be delighted. The, the police uh, area have got to be having the right ball, haven't they? I mean, they've got to have arguments in the local police station over who it gets to have a lap of Suzuka. Yeah, they're coming round turns 13 and 14. The spoon curve is just taken as one long left-hand curve, and then that leads down towards the iconic 130R at turn 15. Past the... Uh, the uh, racing school pit lane on the right hand side ever so shortly they actually use that for some race meetings so during the Japanese Grand Prix uh, weekend I watched the Japanese F4 from that pit wall yes um, and with the teams there the uh, Jensen Button was just locking his brakes into the top of the hill there was he I didn't spot that mm, yeah, he's going to have to be careful it is, it is relatively cool and the, you can see the drivers all working hard as the Honda NSX um, safety car comes out the motorcycles have done their job they've uh, completed uh, their parade lap they're going to pull in and now we're going to have the formation lap behind the uh, the safety car so yeah there's an Impreza and a Lexus behind I'm not sure if the identity of the car in the middle extra points if you can name all the police cars massive points if you can name the police motorcycles as well you'll see the Honda NSX as Rob just said will come out look at that synchronised fan waving flag waving though in the grandstand just by the big wheel Things like that don't happen by chance today. There's been some rehearsal going on there. And they do genuinely, the fans do come along and rehearse waving the flags. And they will wave the flags for their car every single time their car goes past. Well, there's the police making a racket. Which is nice for them, but they'll peel off to the right just now. And there they go. One of them doesn't want to go, does he? He's warming his tyres. But behind them, they are warming their tyres up in the GT500 car. There you can see Jensen Button weaving around. But nothing from the Arta Autobacks car. Now, why no tyre warming? Oh, there he goes. He's woken up. Uh, he may have just been accelerating and braking in a straight line just to uh, gently bring some heat into the brakes, bring some heat from the brakes into the wheel. That, of course, warms the air inside the tyre and gives uh, temperature and pressure. Look at the size of the field. Sam, it never ceases to impress me, the... the quality and quantity of cars on the grid for Super GT. It's why it's uh, one of the most popular GT championships in the world right now. 5,807 metre long circuit, 5.8 kilometre circuit. A couple of lakes in the middle of the infield. We just saw one on the screen. Little turtles live in that lake. 
again, like Alton Park, which gets its second reference of the morning. No turtles at Alton Park. Might be the odd terrapin, though. Terrapins are <laughs> very, very clever. That sounds like an advert for Moonraker forklifts. So we're walking through this famous section of track right here, the Snake. Suzuka's one of the most distinctive sections of the track. And we're looking at these corners. What's, Rob, you, you've raced on this track. I've only wandered around it and done the odd track day. What's your favourite corner here? This one, turn seven. It goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, turn seven, it's terrific. It comes off the back of the S's, then rises up over a crest, and then you come down into the first Degna here, which is faster than you think, down into the second Degna here at turn nine, which is slower than you think. So Particularly tricky, that second Degna as well. You'll see quite a lot of action around the circuit, but we're coming up as the cars come up towards the first overtaking, real big overtaking opportunity of the circuit other than turn one. Of course, that notorious Senna Prost moment at turn one of Suzuka. But here we see going in, we've seen a notorious Benson Jutt and a Kamui Kobayashi moment around here, I believe. Uh, we could be, uh, well, of course, both those drivers on the grid today. So we could uh, have a, a Super GT replay of the, uh, the Button Kobayashi in, um, incident. But uh, they rise up now, coming up round uh, turn 11 and 12, heading back up towards the spoon curve where we saw the uh, police motorcycles coming out the previous lap. Oscar TM says he loves the sound of these beautiful beasts. So do we, Oscar, and we will be cranking it up later on, as they say, in NASCAR land. But for now, look, there's a nice view of the seaside. Not exactly somewhere you'd go and sunbathe, though. There's a massive oil terminal just there in the background. And uh, I've stood up on this corner and just looked out towards the sea, and there's a breeze that comes in. And that can make the temperature a little bit unpredictable, the weather, but it doesn't look like it today. Looks like it's just going to be a fairly straightforward... 21 degrees, nice weather conditions, tyre war. Four different tyre manufacturers in here and their w rates of wear are going to be everything. Yeah, Satoru Nakajima looking relatively pensive. Um, he's hoping that his car, only carrying six kilos of ballast, running um, as all the top four cars are on the Bridgestone tyres, will be able to get their tyres up to temperature quickly. We've actually seen a little bit of weaving once the race has started from the Hondas this year. So the mid-engined uh, configuration is obviously very kind, very light on its tyres, but that does mean that they, they could struggle to get the... Um, the tyres up to temperature and with Nick Cassidy there lurking in fourth position in the first of the Lexus cars he's going to be looking to push them very very hard whilst they still don't quite have full temperature and pressure remember the cars running heavy with fuel as well the cars will now come and form up on the starting grid into the correct order two by two so two by two with a big stagger between them. The safety car has pulled in. We're getting ready, as long as the starter is happy, for the first ever Super GT 300 kilometers of Suzuka. It's the fan festival and there are the fans. The GT 500 cars are lined up in good order. The lights are green and we are racing for the first time in Mi Prefecture. And as you see the tyre, they're still struggling for tyre temperatures, those Hondas, but they've got to look out for Nick Cassidy going round the outside into turn one, buttonholes, second position. Cassidy has looked for a gap round the outside. Has he made it? Yes, he has. Cassidy round the outside, he's picked off one Honda. Now he's lining up the second Honda of Jensen Button. He's going to have him quite quickly. These Hondas are really struggling for tyre temperatures. As the GT300 field gets underway, their light goes green. Will they pass before the start finish line? Pat the 86 is trying to go round the outside of the Lexus, but Hatsune Miku is coming up the inside, doesn't quite make that stick, the door is slammed shut rather rudely. Thank you for a lady. And the Subaru BRZ holding in fourth position, all square in a GT300. I'll keep watching that, Rob, you keep an eye on GT500, it's getting spicy there. The Arthur NSX has made a little escape, he's weaving to get heat in the tyres, but Nick Cassidy now, will he look to the inside of the hairpin? No, he looks to the outside of the hairpin, Sam. There's no room there, but Jensen Button mirrors full of Nick Cassidy. He's pushing him really, really hard in the uh, Red Bull-sponsored uh, Lexus. Button is really going to be putting on his great experience of motor racing around the world to be holding off Nick Cassidy here. But Cassidy's got to be a little bit careful because Kagori's temp tyre temperatures are quite clearly coming up, and that second blue Honda NSX is right on the tail of Cassidy and if he makes any mistake but look we can see the Arta NSX is still weaving going down the back straight they are really struggling for tyre temperature of these Hondas it's such a chilly day you know the, the um, 
Super GT uh, used to racing in more tropical climates and this is almost like a European climate that we've got but um, no the uh, Arta car there good clean start and pulling away enjoying the clean air and then uh, Jensen Button he's had to look defensive to keep Cassidy at bay as the GT 300s now come through spoon, spoon curve onto the back straight. Atsuni Miku seems to be losing pace I don't know if she's had trouble somewhere but she has just lost the position to drop from fourth down to third down to fifth and she's just losing to the position to the station Georgia. That is not going well for Mika. Did she have a moment? Because she was battling much further up and she's still falling about the Leon Mercedes now having a look there and the Audi R8 as well. They're going to be making moves into the chicane. A bit of a hairy place to make a move, but they're going to try it anyway. Four wide. Into the narrowest part of the track. I mean, that's just a very clean racing usually in Super GT, but Suzuka is troubling. Now we're going to see what happens to Hatsune Miku. There she is in third position. Battling with the Hoppy 86 and the Subaru BRZ, three wide almost. So this is coming oh, yeah, up and well up through that iconic turn seven, the never-ending left-hander, and uh, yeah, but yeah. What happened to Miku there? She really dropped back. Mm. Pass almost looked like perhaps a fuel pressure problem. It looked um, a little bit mechanical, but, but the no. Hoppy 86 has lost position. It's got that as well. Hoppy 86 is down to sixth position. There he is. No sign of and any. Miku is up to second. No sign of any contact. No sign of damage on the bodywork. Looks clean enough. And that's why I didn't spot Miku. She's gone up to second. So it was the Hoppy that was out of position. Well, Izawa is disappearing now off into the lead by some margin. Jensen Button in second in his identically identical but different painted Honda NSX GT. These cars are largely identical but there is some freedom in suspension geometry that they can walk around with there's the car set up and the overall layout of the car that they can play with a uh, good start from Jan Mardenborough he's moved up a position gone from sixth position up to fifth Sam so uh, Jan um, right in the mix of that bunch that we're looking at now headed by here by Jensen Button yeah and you can see the difference those tyre temperatures are making now Button's beginning to gap Cassidy ever so slightly and he's got to look out and Cassidy's got to look out for the Cajun NSX behind him and then a huge gaggle. The car to watch in this race is quite at the moment is Nick is uh, James Rossiter the super sub in the Wacos car I believe it is. Yes he's subbing for Felix Rosenquist who as we know is racing in Berlin this weekend in Formula E but uh, Button's car moving around quite a lot through the S's there, bottoming out as he comes up into turn seven. These cars producing a huge amount of aerodynamic downforce. That's uh, Nick Cassidy's teammate. He'll be climbing on board after the single stop we're making. Well, just looking in the uh, the background of this image, Nick Cassidy's flatmate's hunting him down. Jan Mudder is up to fifth and is hunting down. That blue car GTR is making it a great run, but here in GT300, the mysteriously troubled Hoppy 86 is lost to seventh position now to Tomita's Audi. Not sure what's going on with that car at the moment. No, it, it's, as I said a moment ago, it could almost be something small like fuel pressure because it seems to be struggling midway down the straight. It, it struggled midway through turn seven on the opening lap. And yeah, dropping back mysteriously, Sam. It just uh, seemed to back up it. and backed up the BRZ and Miku. Miku got up to second as a result of that. It completely threw me. Well, there's the Motul Ortec GTR with the entirely identical and not at all different Michelin Shod White. The white car, I think we've got to call it. With uh, the craft car, the craft sports car, driven by Satoshi Motoyama. We need a better name for that car. I'm just going to call it the white car. Doesn't sound quite right, does it? And there's the famous red car number 23. Ronnie Quintarelli made another one of his good starts. Obviously, he was on the back of the GT500 field, starting in 15th. Remember, he's carrying 54 kilos of uh, success ballast. He's carrying a, 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 a medium-sized child or a, or a fully grown grid girl with him in oh, terms of weight. I think that's literally what he is doing. But here comes, I think it's Heike Kovalainen at the wheel of the Denso-sponsored Lexus. It is indeed, and he's trying to get a run on Heike Kovalainen. But behind them, just keep an eye out. That's James Rossiter. And he is not known for being reticent. No, no taking of course, Kintarelli, having that fuel flow restriction, Sam, as well, will just be slightly less um, quick down the straights as well, so uh, leaves him vulnerable from, uh, from attack, and as we've seen on many, many occasions before, James Rossiter driving that car there, the Wacos LC500 Lexus, uh, only needs half a car width, and he'll go for it. And, of course, what 
Quintarelli is currently being is the tail gunner of the GTR Owners Club. Just in front of him is the Craft Sports car driven by Satoshi Motoyama. We talked about and in front of that is the Forum Engineering car, the blue and white GTR driven by JP Oliveira, who had a slight moment coming out of the hairpin there. JP Oliveira, the winner of the last uh, 300 kilometer race here at Suzuka in 2010. So uh, he's been, uh, he's a veteran as Jensen Button is of the uh, of Suzuka. A uh, question coming in about the GT300 cars uh, on the chat. Does SRO do the balance performance for the GT300 cars? Yes, it does, is the answer. And does a great job as well. I, I was, um, in my research for this event, was looking at the GT300 championship table and there's not one type of car dominating. It's genuinely a, a sprinkling of the different types of car in that category. So SRO doing a brilliant job as they always do. Well, here, is the, here are those GT300 cars. That's Hatsune Miku in the number four Mercedes. Very distinctive livery on that. But Hatsune Miku is being hunted by the Subaru BRZ, which has a very mixed record in Super GT. It's sometimes very, very quick. And it's, it won, of course, the Suzuka 1000 kilometers uh, last year. And sometimes it's very, very unreliable. In the GT300, the fastest lap is 159.2 on at lap two, set by Morio Nitta. Now, RJ Connell's let us know from Super GT World that lap time, that's quicker than your best lap time around here. Oh, my word, yeah, absolutely. But I was driving a TVR. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> made in Blackpool. And it finished as well. Yeah, that's a lie. Uh, we did uh, two race meetings back to back. We raced at Knock Hill one weekend, flew the car, raced in Suzuka the weekend after. And as eclectic mixtures of circuits go, Knock Hill to Suzuka, I was fairly impressed with that. There is Morio Nitta in the K-Tunes Lexus and he's just disappearing from his own at the moment. Strong hair from both those drivers. Looked like a little Japanese um, boy band there. But yeah, great pace and um, like the leader of GT500, um, he's enjoying the clean air at the head of the field. Now I'm going to, I am certain at some point, Nakajima there in the AU Lexus LC500 hunting down seventh position, which is Matsura in the Epson NSX, a car that's usually quite you know, sort of anonymous in the races. The only Dunlop shot car in GT500. I, I am going to call out the AU car as uh, James Rossiter at some point during this race. I'm sure of it because he's raced it so long, but it's been moved to the substitute duty this season. Nakajima looking particularly racy, coming down into the uh, chicane, but no way by. I say no way by. He looks to move one way, then the other. Has he got a run out onto the pit straight? We'll much see. Much better drive out of the chicane there. Much, much better drive out of the chicane. And, uh, well, he's going to have a run into turn one. Now Nakajima has got the toe. Is he going to go to the inside or the outside, or is he going to think better of it? He thinks better of it. Why the, the, the drive out, I mean, I, coming out of the Casio Triangle, or whatever it's called these days, yep. it, that was noticeable, the fact that Nakajima was lifting to not drive into the back of... Yeah, um, I had a... I, I glanced down at my notes, and... Um, uh, the Honda that we're looking at there, the Epsom-sponsored Honda, uh, the one in seventh position, is the only car on the Dunlop tyre in GT500, and it could it, he could be running a stronger compound, which he'd, he'd lose a little bit of traction, but of course, going to a harder compound could give him more durability, so perhaps the Lexus will be looking to change tyres that pit stop on that Honda won't be, so here we're seeing that strategy already coming into play one-stop race. The strategy is pretty simple to work out, assuming there are no safety cars. Like will, will, they, the, will they or won't they change tyres though? Well, that's, that's going to be the factor. I think you will see people taking two tyres or no tyres at all and just doing fuel in the driver change. That will give an advantage, but will they be able to keep that going through the race? Each tyre manufacturer brings a set of different tyre compounds to the track and we get that, only get that information after the race because they don't want to give away their secrets. No Formula One style different marked sidewalls, which is a bit of a shame. You get so used to it, don't you? It would be good to see. And you know, the, the event here today is called the Fan Festival and giving the fans more information about what strategies the teams uh, will be uh, putting into place throughout the race. Uh, again, another thing to keep the uh, fans interest. But Nakajima looks to drive his right as he comes down into the uh, aforementioned Casio Triangle. Now some discussion has gone on about could we see Super GT elsewhere in the world? The answer is a resounding yes. Because we will see a challenge race between DTM and Super GT in 2019. Where that will be and the details of that race have yet to emerge. But we are promised the race will happen in 2019. 
I also believe we might see a Mercedes take part in Super GT in GT500 next year, powered by a non-Mercedes engine. Ah, so here we have a... Uh, no, that's not a replay. It's, uh, no, that's live. Uh, gone, sorry, gone back to live uh, as we're now into GT500 lapping for the first time these clusters of uh, slower and um, uh, racing head-to-head -head GT300s. Well, as I was about to make quick work of UG E-Day there in the Bentley, just ahead of them, though, the Toyota Mark X, which is a car that you only really see in Japan. That's that green mother chassis GT300 car. Looks a bit like a GT500. There it is, but it is a GT300. And this is probably the most competitive race we've seen since that car was introduced at the start of last year. Yeah, he's right in the thick of the... Um uh, the, the Prius and the, the Bentley battle there. So, yep, the two cars side by side as they make their way out of the uh, back straight. The Arta NSX making a move on the GT300 championship leader, uh, the sister car, the Arta BMW M6. At the wheel of that at the moment is Tom Walkinshaw. <laughs> Walkinshaw to many people. Tom, Sean, Walkinshaw to his friends. And... Uh having a bit of banter with him on Twitter and you can follow and engage in the banter on social media at Nismo on Twitter in the chat here on YouTube don't forget to hit the likes and leave your comments we do read them Jensen Button has settled into a lovely rhythm um, he's now got a little bit of breathing space between him and Nick Cassidy breathing space of seven or eight car lengths and in that seven or eight car lengths is a couple of GT300 cars so uh, he can just focus on getting his head down. But look at this battle for position. We've got four, five, six GT500 cars there side by side. It was five because that's a, the, the car guy Honda in the background. X Atosso 1X23X. Do we think the new Toyota Supra will face the freest next year? I don't know. I don't know. I think Toyota's plans will be made a lot clearer after Le Mans and the Fuji round of WEC, Sam. Yeah, I think that's true. I do have an inkling of what engine. I think whatever that Team APR will run in place of the Prius, unless they continue, decide to continue with the Prius, it will not be powered by the LMP1 engine as of next year. I believe it will be powered by the four-cylinder turbocharged engine, which is derivative of the one that's used in GT500. Meanwhile, this battle for position at the tail of the GT500 field is uh, uh, led at the moment by um, uh, JP Oliveira as we see uh, Nakajima still pushing really hard on the back of the Honda ahead of him. He needs to get that move done because he's holding him up now. Matsura in the Dunlop shot Epson is just really holding up Nakajima. It's quick though, the, uh, the Honda's fast and it's got zero kilos of ballast on so Nakajima can have a little look from time to time but then it just away down the straight he'll be hoping to catch GT300 cars in an opportune moment and um, bust a move in traffic as we say well busting move in traffic at the moment is Jan Mardenborough in the Calsonic Team Impul oh three wide coming out of 130R that was uh, quite lively as they tried to go around Mintzilla uh, Jan Mardenborough is working through this traffic as well and he's in fifth position currently but if he can get out of that traffic and latch onto the back of that leading pack, he should be doing very well. But the Nakajima is closer than ever before. He's well in the toe going down the start-finish line here at Suzuka. But again, it seems like the Honda pulls away even in the toe, just slightly at the end of the straight. Yeah, just slightly slipperier through the air. And um, yeah, Nakajima certainly looking the racier of the two. But yeah, so ah, here we go. So through the S's now, GT300 cars ahead this Ah, it's uh, worked against him, unfortunately. Pushed him wide off the conventional racing line, and that will have cost him a little. Yeah, the Mark X, they're getting in the way of the AU Toms car, and it gives the Zentsarumo car a little bit of an opportunity to get onto the back of the AU Toms. And, oh, some action coming back there through the field with the, uh, the Craft Sport and Forum Engineering GTRs having a little moment through the traffic there. It was just at the bottom of the camera. It's narrow there as well, Sam. The camera doesn't really do it justice. The track is narrower than you think for somewhere that's... Uh, uh, a, a modern Formula One type venue it's, it does get pretty narrow through the S's and down into here into the hairpin again Nakajima looks to the inside but no the door slams shut there Zed's rumor car is right there now Tachikawa is in this battle Tachikawa is an interesting name obviously Nissan's heritage going right back the Tachikawa Aircraft Company and yeah. the uh, Tama electric car we mentioned Formula E earlier and uh, Nissan's going racing in Formula E starting later this year that car is in development 
and uh, well, lots of announcements and videos, but it's a fantastic video we put together about the Tama electric truck and the relevance of Tachikawa and the word Tama to Nissan. So stay tuned for that one, or research it yourself. It's really quite interesting. Uh, Matsura is still managing to hold off Nakajima and, of course, Tachikawa in the Zentsurumo car. But on the back of the Zentsurumo car is the Wed Sport car, and now JP Oliveira in the Forum Engineering GTR. We are watching this mid-pack battle at the moment because where the action is, but I would quite like to see it at the front pack with Mardenborough, the battle from second down to fifth because that's looking quite spicy as well. Yeah, this cycle uh, overlining gets the move done on Wacos or not. A really nice uh, illustration of just how the uh, how the how the swings and roundabouts of traffic come into play as we see the the Lamborghini balking Kovalainen and hard there through the S's. Waki Saka clearly enjoying the race. I think you could just have Waki Saka cam on. Yeah, he's an enthusiastic little chap, isn't he? Yeah, he, he's very. He's always like that. There is the car. He's back in the Wacos. Wacos is an oil company. In Japan, they do lots of boats. Well, I mean, look at that. That's serious traffic on a very narrow section of track. You've got... Well, I don't and, and it's only going to get tighter from here because the moment they've, uh, they're have they coming round turn 10 into the hairpin here at 11. Like, look at Kaz. Oh, he's up on the kerb. He's been squeezed up on the kerb yeah. by, the, uh, uh, by the, the black and yellow GTR there. And, uh, well, the number 23... GTR GT500 has actually made a great move through that pack because he's now in front of both of his teammates, the Forum Engineering car and the Craft Sport. So JP uh, Oliver, Ronnie Kinterelli really making moves there. Championship leader getting up through the pack and he's now hunting down the Wed Sport car and the Zentsurumo. So we could see those Michelin tyres on the number 23 coming into their own. Not so much for the Craft Sports car that's just lost the position to the... Lexus back there, the Wedsport Lexus has now got him, but look, drafting down the back straight, it's Nissan on Nissan action here. And this is where the fuel flow restriction will be hampering Kinterelli a little at the end of these long straights where the car just runs out of puff ever so, ever so slightly as they make their way through the final chicane and the long right-hander at turn 18 down onto the front straight. Well, while this battle is great to watch, we are missing a battle at the front of the field. Nick Cassidy now is just six tenths of a second behind Jensen Button last time across the strike. Ooh, the Golf Porsche squeezes the Honda there as they come down into turn one, and he's uh, opened the door, and they let, he lets a full train of um, GT500s by him now. Oh, this is this is this battle, this traffic, because the track is so narrow, you can't really tell when you're watching it on telly, but when you're actually standing in the middle of the track looking at it and doing that thing that you have to do when you walk a track and go down to the driver's eye level it is so so narrow with these GT300 cars there we go here's the battle for second position that's Nick Cassidy right on the back of Benson Jutton for second and Button puts a wheel into the dirt that's not going to help his drive out to the corner is Cassidy going to have a run up into Spoon I think he is uh, Cassidy running with 30 kilos of success ballast Jensen Button running with 34 so very very similar weights of the car as they make their way out of turn 14 and run down onto the back straight questions coming in about the pace of these cars well we know they're quick how quick are they how would they stack up against a new generation of LMP1 cars I think they'd be quicker I think they'd be quicker yeah I think they'd be quicker um, the the, uh, the Toyota would be I, I think there or thereabouts, but I think they'd be quicker than the privateer cars, which really, you know, as an illustration, you look at these cars, you can see the DNA of their road car derivative and the fact that they're producing such pace, such downforce is uh, uh, amazing. Out of a, a, a relatively small uh, internal combustion engine, only a two-litre four-cylinder engine. Question coming in the chat. James Cuffrey, which manufacturer has won the most Su Suzuka 300 kilometers? Uh, I'll tell you in uh, about 40 laps time. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever won the Suzuka 300 kilometers. It's the first time it's ever run. And uh, sprint racing around Suzuka is pretty good. Jokerman asks, do you think hybrid engines will ever come to Super GT? Yes, um, two Toyota Priuses uh, running around in exactly. GT 300. And the Honda NSX GT 500 2014 was also a hybrid so that answers that one um, as we see the GT500 still working through that traffic the uh, up garage 86 there 
desperately trying to stay out of the way without losing too much time through the snake. Into that long, long, long corner. Oh no, nearly into that long, long corner that Rob likes so oh, much. No, uh, there it is. It is that long, yeah, long, no, long that, corner. Yeah, it, it, it goes on and on and on there, uh, going past um, Haruka Kuasara in the uh, Leon AMG. And uh, yeah, lots of. As usual, lots of people talking about the comparisons of the different lap times in the different classes. Is GT500 quicker than GTE? Yes, by a massive jump. Simple as that, really. Uh, Slorps, however you pronounce that. Slorps has asked, uh, what do you think the future looks like between DTM and GT500 behind the challenge races in uh, 2019? No real news on that, but there is talks about a world championship in the offing as that's James Rossiter making a move on the wet sport car he's come actually right through look he's got both nissans he's got hiking over line and he's so we haven't really been seeing james rossiter's moves but he has as predicted worked his way through the pack and he's hunting down now the number 23 motel Autec gtr itself hunting down the zentsurumo bit of debris there and a not very good place in 130r as the au tom's lexus is held up by the d station porsche but that would have helped out the motor Autec car but the audi's just in the wrong place and there's james rossiter right on the tail of them rossiter came from absolutely nowhere at turn 13 and sent it up the the inside of the sister lexus and now he's poised on the back of ronnie Quintarelli. the d station porsche stays tight the pit wall stays well out of the way but uh, Rossiter in the pink and blue car, um, yeah, on fire at the moment. This is going to be one of those Sugo style races, isn't it, where we just don't get a chance to breathe. <laughs> um, Ronnie Quintarelli, you know, he's running around there in 10th. He's come up from 15th, carrying that medium sized passenger with him and the stage one fuel flow restriction. Um, we said in the pre show, what can we expect from him? And I said, well, hopefully some points. He's heading in that right direction, but there's our race leader now. There is our former GP2 driver. I think he won a race at Monaco. He did, a couple of years back. It was the first time the Japanese national anthem had been played on a podium in Monaco. Ooh, early. That's very early. He's not quite ready, though. No hands device, but um, yeah, teammates getting ready. Only 13 laps in. That would be a, a massively early pit stop. One stop race, midpoint of the race, 20, lap 26. Expect to see most of your pit stops around there, but is someone going to go really long on tyres and try and get an advantage like that? Uh, James Guffrey has come back. Suzuka first had a 300 km race in 1995, which Impul won in, then, in 2003 and 2004. Nissan from the race, but this is uh, trouble for Heike Kovalainen, and he's lost it in the Degnas. So they coming out of the second Degna, um, uh, he's parked it. He's got the safety car board out. Off the, yeah, the marshal there holding the safety car board, as you can see one of the other marshals waving the green flag. But no, coming out of the second Degna at turn nine, uh, where the traffic is, would be to our right here. Um, Kovalainen's in on the barrier on the inside. It'd be great to see a, um, a well, replay there. I'm very I curious as to what happened, because Heike's out of the car, but there doesn't appear to be any damage on the car. It looks like he's just looped it. Why, why is he got out uh, there could be damage on the back of the car that we can't see there could be damage on the other side I'm, I'm, what, I'm here with my hands in the air I simply don't know but um, I'm looking now for uh, the safety car boards perhaps as um, we see the forum engineering car looking to make a move on the Lexus ahead of him yeah it's forum engineering hunting down Wedsport and there's the safety car so, so we'll see is anyone going to make an early stop lap 14 it really is Barrier. Yeah, pit lane closed, safety car out, and yeah, I think we'd be bordering on unachievable if you did stop now, you'd have to stop for a splash and dash at the end of the race. You wouldn't be able to make it to the end of the race if you stop now. I think it's just inside the fuel window. I think so. Yeah, it, it I will think be, the fuel it will be just, just in tight. The it would be very tight indeed. Big loser due to this safety car is that car there. Kazawa had been disappearing off into the countryside. A nice drive through Mi Prefecture. And now he's lost all of that advantage he'd built up over that man, Jensen Button, who himself had built up a decent advantage over James Rossiter. No, it wasn't James Rossiter. It was uh, Nick Cassidy. Nick Cassidy, who wasn't right on the tail of him there. So. And we saw Jensen Button's teammate, uh, Naoki Yamamoto, getting ready in the pit lane. The safety car has now 
successfully picked up the race leader. Where is Jensen Button in the background? There he is. The other big loser, of course, is the K-Tunes RCF leading the GT300 field. No immediate concern to stop the keeper Tom's Red Bull Lexus LC500. The hero car just casually putting on his helmet, which is what you'd be looking at for a lap 26 stop, I guess. Lap 20 to 26. There goes a... Uh, one of the safety vehicles to go and recover Heike Kovalainen's car. Still no real understanding of what actually befell Heike Kovalainen. No, it will be lovely to see a replay there. I can't help but think that a, a driver of um, Heike's experience and credibility wouldn't have just dropped it on his own. I would hazard a guess that he might have been tangled up in traffic, but um, without having the, uh, the replay, we're, gonna, uh, we're, we're just going to be randomly speculating, which I'd like to think we're quite good at. Random speculation, could you imagine that? Love a bit of random speculation. One of the things you'll see in Japanese racing is they're not backwards about putting on various vehicles onto track, such as a recovery truck or a 4x4. Four four. There they are. Oh, no, the uh, Nissan Skyline SUV. Yeah, eclectic mixture of Nissan Skylines. and Is that a Porsche? That's a Porsche, yeah. It is. Unusual to see. So Porsche was obviously given Super GT a new car. The Nissan Skyline there, though... Um, Quite different to the original Skyline, which is not a GTR, it's just a Skyline. And you're right, Sam, the... the oh, hello. Oh, the, yeah, um, uh, the LC500 there, it, it, it does look in pretty good shape. Yeah, it, I, I don't understand. I'm very confused as to what's happened, because it's obviously looped it on the exit. I wonder if his engine let go. Locked the rear wheels, because he's gone quite a long way, and it's just pointing off the track, isn't it? Again, random speculation. I'm loving it. Yeah. Uh, it, I, th I think we're going to see another, a, a good couple of laps behind the safety car here. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, one of the um, 86s pulling off onto the grass, and that's, that's the Team Mac car. Yeah, he's he's parked he, it. Yeah, he's that's driven really, it very slowly into really, the gravel. Really, really rubbish piece of parking as well. Yeah. I know. There's a bit of there's a gravel trap. I'll put the car in it. Yeah, I, I, I can park on the grass where the marshals can cl can easily retrieve me, or I'll just pop it in the gravel where I'll get beached. To be honest, it could be being quite considerate because the marshals in Suzuka, I think, are professional marshals, not like the marshals at Silverstone, who are all volunteers. But they all, they, you know, sometimes the marshals get a bit bored. They want something to do, so you know, they whip out their pork pies and in in, in goes a car, and they, you know, they recover it that way. So he's, he's given them something to do, but that could extend the safety car a little bit. And the Suzuka Marshall's penchant for pork pies, is that, it, it, does that come from experience of being at a Marshall's post where they're, they're opening the, the pasties and pies? Yeah, because I'd usually crashed by that point. <laughs> so pit lane closed, so nobody can make a pit stop just yet. Um, we'll be looking for uh, a flurry of early stoppers, perhaps once the pit lane opens. Well, what this safety car will do, because the track does appear to be in good condition, apart from that random bit of debris which in 130R, which clearly no one's going to go and get, <laughs> is um, the tyre life is now quite opened out because these guys are chugging around. They're not putting in life, you know, damage into the tyres. So as long as they get them back up to temperature after the safety car, yeah, they, they might not need to worry too much about pit stops. The drivers, drivers will made will have made a change to the engine settings as well, so they will be now in super super lean burn um, uh, engine fuel flow. So they'll be using hardly any fuel. So they'll be conserving as much fuel as they possibly can um, whilst they're rumbling around behind the safety car. Um, some great comments coming in on the chat. Um, Taki Inoue did nothing wrong. Brilliant username. <laughs> said, um, did he see some liquid spray coming out of Heike Kovalainen's Lexus? I didn't spot that myself, but you may have done. Um, we'll see if we can pick that one up. And then a fantastic comment also coming in from uh, Lorenzo Bonda. He's looking at the driver of the uh, Mac 5 Sayakin with the snatch tank there, uh, recovering. It said, will he kick on the Banui converter and engine go bonkers? <laughs> For anyone who's a fan of Speed Racer, you'll get that. If you're not, it just sounds like nonsense. So the snatch tank is in action. Mr. Mr. Wonky Sticker in the Audi has gone straight. He's, yeah, good. Good. Maybe he's been listening to our banter on the, uh, uh, on the, the English language 
coverage. Uh, there we see the Kahin Honda mechanics prepping uh, what looked like three used tyres and one new. Hmm, keep That's an eye an on that. an interesting set, but as you can see, no tyre warmers used in Super GT. Oh, you're really giving it some there in that 4 before. Fire it in, son. Fire it in. Nicely driven through that. Very well driven. But yeah, the uh, you... There are no tyre warmers allowed in Super GT, which means the cars take a little while to get up to temperature. And so they come out of the pit lane very, very slowly during the race. So you can see people maybe just desperately trying to get their tyres up to temperature while being attacked by someone who's got a lap of and temperature in their tyres. So it's a very interesting defensive driving. You'll see Sugio Matsuda there getting ready to take over from Ronnie Kinterelli. Still, still four to five laps from the from the ideal pit stop window. Yeah, just for viewers who are new to Super GT, who perhaps haven't uh, experienced the cars coming out of the pit lane on cold tires, the difference between a cold set of slicks and a hot set of slicks is enormous. These slick tires develop a massive amount of grip once they're warm, but develop a significantly less amount of grip than a road tire when they're hot. So. The, the drivers leave the pit lane it's almost like driving on snow and ice for the first couple of corners and then for the first three quarters of their outlap they have to be relatively tentative um, whilst pushing clearly as hard as they possibly can to uh, minimize the damage to their lap time but yeah the difference between hot slicks and cold slicks is ginormous and what are these tires of course because it's a tire wall formula they're constantly developed these tires are designed to be used without tire warmers which is something that means they, they heat up quite well, but then the temperature stabilizes. So they've got quite a wide operational window, unlike yeah. the Pirellis, for example, in Formula One, which have a very narrow window. Oh, the, They're designed like, to be used with tyre yeah, warmers. The, the size of the operational window on a Formula One tyre was described to me as the size of a postage stamp. Yeah, it's, it's, they seem to be have a wide operational window, but unless you want to go really fast, and then they're almost yeah. impossible. Yeah, you've got sort of one opportunity on a Formula One tyre, I believe, to get it wrong. And then once the tyre is burnt on the top layer, game over. Whereas these Super GT tyres, they're using a lot more flexible than that. And again, another reason why we see such great racing. Um, I have a feeling, looking at where they were loading Kovalainen's car, this could be our final lap behind the safety car now, So. Then will we see them go straight to pit stops or otherwise? It's not our final lap behind safety car because the cars are still moving. When you see a Super GT safety car period end, you'll discover it's somewhat different to what's... Oh, no, maybe you no, might be right. No, Rob, is, you're is. right. It is, this is it, yes. So the cars are now stopping on the start-finish line. And the GT300 cars will line up on one side of the track, the GT500 cars on the other. And they'll all arrange in race order and separate, separate out the two races. <laughs> Here we go again. And there goes the NSX, because all the GT500s have arrived in position. What's nice to see is you see the two grids lined up. Again, if you're new to us here at Super GT, very warm welcome. Click like, click subscribe. Come and see us uh, throughout the season. You can see the two colours of headlights. The white headlights of the GT500 cars and the yellowy tinged headlights of the GT300 cars. Now, what would you do here, Rob? Would you get your driver in on the new tyres straight yep. away as yep. the safety car ends. Yeah, and send him out in clean air. Or would you get your car that's got semi-warm tyres on, go out for another 10 laps, get a bit of a gap while everybody has to stop so you have that clean air as well if on a warmer tyre? If I were leading, I'd stay out. If my driver was in a pack, I'd bring him in. I think there's more time to be gained by coming in, changing tyres and going out in clean air where you can just focus on getting the tyre up to temperature quickly and getting getting back up to speed in clean air than there would be staying out there now battling in traffic. So um, here we go, the 52-lap um, sprint race, uh, as, we, as we suspected, comes down to this pit stop strategy. Miku and the Subaru BR said the big winners from the safety car in the GT300 field, that big gap that's been built out by the K-Tunes RCF car 96 has been deleted. Yeah. As has the big gap between this, the Arta NSX, and Jensen Button behind him. Great drive from Izawa this morning. Very, Izawa. very good. Very, very good. Um, just disappeared at the start of the race. And no obvious damage. Yeah, on the that, was the, that was the side of the car that 
that we that was hidden to us and um, yeah no damage at all so perhaps um, as was reported in just a random engine failure and he spun on his own oil who knows uh, again one of the pieces of information that we filter through after the race I guess you're watching Super GT live on Nismo TV it's part of the super streaming Sunday followed up following up this race with live coverage of the Blanc Pan Endurance Series from Silverstone followed by the Nissan Micro Cup live from somewhere in North America and I can tell by your voice Sam you're looking forward to the Micro Cup more than you're looking forward to the Blanc Pan Series from the home of British motor racing what Brooklyn's <laughs> the spiritual home of British motor racing in Brazil. The, ho the home of the British Grand Prix since 1946 uh, 46 46 Eight? Oh my word. Apart from when it was at Brent Hatch and Dolphin Park. Yeah, true, true, true. Was it um, the European Grand Prix? It, at it was. It, as I said, it, I knew that was wrong. Well, there is Heike Kovalainen and looking, well, <laughs> disappointed. Yeah, well, there you go. That Chester said it, everything. I don't yeah. know. What happened? That was the gesture of uh, mechanical failure. Yeah, wasn't me. Well, live here, an exclusive on Nismo TV. If you enjoy this first Super GT race and you want to see more, don't worry. Every race we stream, you can watch on demand later on. So we have every race pretty much since 2014 here in full. Well, that's Sakaguchi, who got out of the Mac 5 car. And, um, well, he looks a bit disappointed as well. I don't really know. Maybe just down on his poor parking has been pointed out to him. <laughs> We are about to go back to green flag running at Suzuka. Will we see some lunges? Will we see some pit stops? No one's coming in because the pit lane is still closed. And we're not going back green. So I okay. think at the end, end of this lap, we will go racing again. The safety car will now do a lap um, uh, at higher speed and then peel into his position, I would speculate, at the um, support race pit lane. You think you're going to the support race pit lane? I think he will peel off into the support race pit lane. Would that be too early? That's, that's not too early, no, but I don't think he will. Okay, we'll see. Because he's still got to get back to the, uh, the main pit lane. And it's quite a long drive if you go the other way around. It is. I walked Sorry. it once. It was a terrible mistake. <laughs> so Zika Circuit is, surround is, is, is basically on a hillside. We cut out of the hillside and... Uh, as soon as you leave the circuit, there's big drops off the edge of the track. And one of the Super Formula races late last year got cancelled because of heavy rain caused a landslide just here. As the car's going through this corner, just on the outside of the track, the land gave way and the, the, right up to the edge of the track. Yeah, as, as you say, it, it really gives you an idea of how steep this climb is coming out of turn six up into turn seven. And you can see the nice views of the seaside background. Will Izawa be able to get away from Jensen Button? Will Nick Cassidy be able to get back onto terms with both but look behind them behind the other NSX. We know he's coming in for ties to Cahin and oh now waiting for the up garage GT86 no that's the Wedsport team Bando car rather no, so the Wedsport Bando car is coming in for four tyres now, will they? We have to be careful here. They will have four tyres ready, but will they change four tyres? They could just have. Uh, sometimes the teams have what they call a puncture set, which if the car gets a puncture on the in lap, they'll change, but they might be uh, selling the other teams in the pit lane a dummy. They might just be bringing the tyres out, but they're not changing. They could just do fuel, drive a change, and send it. And this is going to be one that we're going to be playing the replays up, I think, on our instant replay facility here in the studio that we have to find out who changes how many tyres. In round one, Jensen Button seemed to be very slow in his full season Super GT debut after that one-off race here at Suzuka last year. And we thought he was frankly disappointing. The reason what we didn't realise is he was saving tyres throughout yeah. the race. Turned out he was just being careful. Yes, and it was actually turned out to be a fantastic result. Got third position. His first podium since winning the Brazilian Grand Prix five years ago, six years ago. So lights out on the safety car. He's made good his escape. And um, yeah, leaves the uh, leaves the the control of the pace now to Izawa at the head of the field in the Arter NSX. Button definitely a wiser head than Izawa, far more experienced for the 2009 Formula One World Champion. The pits are open. Are we going to see a number of cars dive straight in? 
The wet sport car, I think, is still warming his tyres, despite the fact he's clearly heading for the pit lane. Now the Arter car, Izawa sets off. Gaps button slightly, he caught him napping. Sent it, didn't he? Very, very quick restart there. Brilliant stuff from Izawa. And it's put Cassidy back into the picture. Button's going to have to be very careful on the run down to turn one. Great restart by Izawa. He clearly heard that I said that Button was always ahead. I think Izawa might have been looking at Button weaving and when Button was off the racing line, Izawa sent it. And now uh, here Cassidy. comes Cassidy. And Mardenborough as well is on the back of the other NSX. It's going to be blue car on blue car on blue and white car. And Cassidy says outside they're going to touch. Not quite. Button sees him coming in. Great aggressive racing from New Zealander. Button's going to try and come back at him on the, the inside. That's not going to work. The next corner is a left-hander. There they go. Cassidy, fantastic driving there. Now in GT300, Hatsune Miku making a move into turn one. I do love a good safety car. These safety car restarts, as you say, Sam, just control alt delete the field and now we're back to where we were with two distinctly uh, different fields all racing head-to-head -head for position now Mardenborough is hanging on the back of this pair of Hondas is it going to be a Welshman versus an Englishman because the button's not got the tyre temperature at all has he yeah button is button's struggling. struggling and there's lots of cars in GT300 in the pits and there's GT500 in there very busy pit lane lots of tyres being changed the Hoppy 86 I saw down there one of the Lamborghinis, the Epson NSX. And the battle is absolutely raging at Suzuka. RJ O'Connell says Kovalainen has told Amy in the pits, this enthusiastic girl, that he, the crash was his own mistake. We didn't Blimey. really see a crash. I didn't see any damage on the car either, so maybe we'll get a replay of that. The Wed Sport car, as expected, has changed tyres, but this is the battle we need to be watching for now. Blue car on blue car on the blue car. With a white red, white, gold and black motor <laughs> sponsored Honda behind them. The Prius is coming out of the pit lane there. Button clearly struggling for pace. Now, is he going to come in or is he struggling for tyre temperature? He's lost another position. Oh, not quite. The Cahim was going to go have a go but thought better of it into the triangle. I think these pair of blue Hondas are now holding up Jan Mardenbra there in quite the clearly. in the Calsonic uh, GTR. They both pit, so this has now released Jan into relatively clean air. But Mardenborough's got to be careful looking into the background. That Motul Honda is right on his tail. He needs to get, a bit, as you say, a bit of clean air. Do a few laps under... Well, when it's a, the grip levels are a little bit low, as I like to call it, Welsh conditions, Mardenborough is always extremely strong. Yes, he is very, very... A really razor-sharp car control, and that plays into his hands when the tyres are cold. So um, Button brings his car to a stop on the marks. Jumps out, job done. Yamamoto gets in. Now, I heard the tyre guns going. Now, what are we seeing here? Uh, is this Kyle Lonen? He loops to the rear. No. That's no, the Epson. It's the Epson Honda on his outlap. On cold tyre. He saves it, though. Yeah. Yours, Ooh. mine, yours. Ooh. Ooh, the Hoppy 86. Now, we, we, because of that replay, I've, they've already changed the rear tyres on the Ray Brig. It looks like they're doing all four tyres on that, which I didn't expect. Two tyres only for the Kraft Sports GTR, I think. I only saw two cars, yeah, two tyres going well. on the white car. The Cahen stalemate after the pit stops. Yeah. The Ray Brig and Cahen came. Cahen. The Ray Brig and Cahen came in the pits together and have left the pits together. Because of the safety car, it's an early pit stop, lap 20. Just in the, 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 the early edge of the pit window. There goes the Wed Sport car. Now he's going to get that done on the white car with some ease because of the tyre temperature differences. And we're in the locked off pit lane camera position, which is also like worrying here. So oh, there you go. And he's got the Wed Sport car has got that move done. We didn't see the move. So Let's this is the it. difference uh, now between hot tyres and cold tyres. The uh, white Nissan on the cold slicks there, really struggling to uh, carry corner speed. There's our race leader. Now he's stayed out for another lap. Uh, lots of questions coming in about the strategy. What is the pit window? I would have said 20, lap 20 to lap 30 is the ideal pit window. So this safety car was a little bit on the early size. But some people choosing to stay out. Izawa there, an example. But look at the gap to the keeper Tom's car. Cassidy's bringing that gap down ever, every, ever, ever so much every lap. So yep. uh, Cassidy is on it today. 
He's on it every day, but um, obviously as the uh, tyres evolve and as the fuel load comes down, that's playing into the hand of the uh, the keeper, Tom's car. And there he is, the two cars in the same shot for the first time. That's got to be quite satisfying for the reigning champion to get such good move done on Jensen Watson as well. Yes, yes, good for confidence. Matt Stevenson asks, would Ronnie Cinturelli and Yusugio Matsuda have an MP uh, fuel economy advantage due to the flow restriction? Therefore, a shorter pitch time due to less fuel being used. It's marginal, to be honest. It's an instant, it's a fuel flow restriction, not a fuel consumption restriction. So they're burning ever so slightly less fuel at the peak. Yeah, it, 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 the, um, the, the, these two litre four cylinder engines are so efficient, they will be burning less fuel, but over the course of a full tank, it would be a, a, a cup full, a, a litre or so. So. Um, Yes and no, to answer your question. Again, the Honda's struggling for tyre temperature. Now, what's this a replay of? Oh, this is the wet sport making the move around the outside of the car. Very neat. Yeah, at the hairpin, as we were saying earlier in the pre-show, just brilliant overtaking manoeuvre. Just pops out down the inside. And there goes the wet sport, clearly finding a bit of pace on his new tyres and new driver, of course. Those nutty, nutty yellow wheels. Niji Kinemoto. Very, very successful open wheel driver as well as a sports car driver yeah lots of these drivers in gt500 uh, running parallel single seater programs um yamamoto jensen buttons teammate as we said earlier uh, won the recent round of super formula here as we see the previously wonky sticker now straight stickered audi going wheel to wheel with the rcf coming down to the 130r oh that was mighty very brave and in response on the chat to Jasper Kudrick, yes we are. Reading the chat. We like all your comments and all your interaction here at Nismo TV. It's part of the, the whole idea of innovation that excites. We get to tell you about all the nice things that Nismo are doing. Don't forget, we've got Micro Cup coming up later and the Blanc Pan Endurance Series from Silverstone. Elsewhere is the Supercars Series from Australia. And the Zent Sarumo car, number 30 in, is for a four-tyre stop, fuel and a driver change. And that cameraman needs to get out of the way. <laughs> Good burnout as well. Obviously, driver very keen to generate heat and temperature in the rear, heat and temperature, uh, heat and pressure in the rear tyres. So a good burnout leaving the pit lane always helps that. Now we've got to see where the sensory car feeds back into the GT500 field. There comes one of the GT500 blue cars. Which one is it? It's one of the Hondas. It is the 100 Ray Brick. And he will be very easy prey. Yeah, Ishiura doesn't even doesn't even defend, just uh, lets the uh, Ray Brink car through on his inside. And here comes the Wed Sport car that's going to have the same effect, but I think Zent's got a gain on the Wed Sport if he can stay in front, but I think he will struggle to stay in front. Yeah, he's going to get picked off around the outside. See yep. Ya. So that's the, the end of the real danger period where they're on cold, cold tyres. Although, saying that, we did see the Honda... Um, have a half spin at turn nine, so clearly the tyres very, very um, uh, skittery. Skittery is that a word? Skittish, slippery um, on their outlap for the first kind of nine or ten corners. By the time they come down here to uh, turn 15, the 130 are they will have generated enough pressure where they can really start to lean on them though now. That GT3 Lexus you can see on your screen is really working here at Suzuka. The 96k tunes RCF has led from pole position and nobody has really challenged that car. Hatsune Miku in second position there in her Mercedes AMG GT managed to get second position when the Hoppy 86, the number 29 pink and white car, had a moment early in the race. We don't fully understand, and the Subaru BRZ also benefited from that. In case you're wondering, the Subaru BRZ is not identical to the Hoppy 86. Now, one's a Subaru, one's a Toyota. But in production car terms, the BRZ, the GT86 Toyota, are identical, apart from the badges and headlights. I think the headlights might even be the same, actually. I think so. So they are just ident ident identical, apart from the badge and where you bought it from. However, in Super GT terms, the GT86 is a carbon fibre monocoque chassis driven by a 4.5 litre normally aspirated front mounted V8 engine. But the JAF GT300 BRZ uses a BRZ production car as a basis 
as an EJ20 flat four two litre turbocharged boxer engine generally derived from the old world rally car Super Impreza engine and uh, well really advanced aero to the GT500 level because that car's got open aerodynamic development running on Dunlop tyres specially developed for this car it's a wonderful piece of engineering and I really respect the fact that they've carried over the boxer engine configuration from the road car to the race car I know it's a totally different spec but it's nice that they've kind of tipped their hat in that direction and continued down that route well as it says on the nose of the car proud of boxer uh, Hatsune Miku's drivers will be able to read that very well as the car was tucked up right up behind it as we cut away to the GT500 pit stops tyres all four tyres looking like for Wacos a little bit leisurely down there actually so James Rossiter um, out of the Wacos and uh, uh, Kaz Ashima climbing on board. Yeah, driver change done, doors closed. So as soon as the fuel man pulls out, they'll change those two front tyres. In terms of, there's people asking questions about the driver time limits. And, oh, big shunt for the number 26 Honda NSX. And where's that? That's the entry. That's Degna 1. Uh, no, it's De yeah, so he, he's dropped it out of Degna 1 and gone so straight in at Degna big 2. Impact. Uh, it's a big impact. I think that will be another safety car. I, th so. I think it will. And do you know who's going to win on that? Jan Mardenborough. Big time. <laughs> Game on. Uh, great to see the... Um, well, will he? No, he's going to lose out. Because he hasn't no, stopped. No, Those uh, who have no stopped. Jan, Jan will pit now. He, he, will be, he will be in the pits now um, as the safety car picks up the field. But that's a huge impact. Cool. It's, Brilliant to, see, brilliant to see the driver climbing out, the car doing its job okay, and the uh, Recticel foam air barrier um, doing its job. Now, this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm of the opinion that those who haven't stopped, such as the race leaders in both categories, the Alter NSX and the K-Tunes RCF, they are now going to have to be hold out and wait. Now, it depends how heavily fueled they are as well. Now, if you'd run for a lap 26 or so a lap 30 pit window, well, no safety car yet. No, there's a good call there from the yep. Arthur NSX straight in the pits. So our race leader comes in. You can hear the guns. They're changing the rear tyres now. Keeper Tom's car in as well. That's Cassidy out of that one. He can be quite pleased with his day's work. Now, there were questions coming in about the driver time limits. I can see the Subaru BRZ on its way in as well. There aren't really driver time limits. You've got to stop for a driver change in this race. And if you want to be competitive, you, you're going to change about halfway through. And uh, I'm really surprised we haven't got a safety car. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I, I've gone quiet because I'm just looking at the marshals' post, and you can see the marshals talking amongst themselves, but nobody reaching down to grab the SC board as we saw earlier. No, and that could throw the strategies off a little bit more as well, because a lot of these guys have dived to the pits because they clearly expected a safety car as we all did that was a you know it was a, it was a huge impact in a, uh, a a place where the um uh, cars are heading straight towards that's the calsonic car leaving the pit lane so he's done his um driver change as well daiki sasaki takes control of that car but as there's the ray car it was hunting down and obviously sasaki's struggling to hold that off and failing but as expected but that does give us a new race leader for now. Anyway, it's number 23, Motul Vortec GTR. And there's a phrase I didn't think you'd be saying this morning. Uh, Anthony Karuna says, what is the maximum time? Yeah, we were talking about to, uh, the maximum driver times for the, for the drivers. Essentially, yeah, it's just down to race strategy in this, in this how, event. Yeah, how long's a piece of string? How long yeah. can a tank of fuel last? There are specific rules about which our trail will probably tell you, but... They're not really relevant because of the, the nature of the race yeah, strategy. A, is a, a 300 kilometer is a straight one stop single stint. Ooh, that was the um, LC500 there getting mixed up with the previously wonky stickered Audi. Yeah, Hirakawa is struggling a little bit and he's going to have another go at that. And uh, well, the Audi really didn't make it easy there again for Hirakawa. He's not. Oh, well, that Audi just doesn't want to get out of the way, does he? And uh, that's cost Hirakawa fourth position. Which he gave up very easily. Ah, and yeah. there's the reason. Cold tyres. And now he's breaking the toe for himself. Well, still leading this race. Clearly going for a slightly different strategy than is the Motor Law Tech GTR. 
Looks like they're going to run long with Ronnie Kinterelli at the wheel before slotting in Sugiye Matsuda. Or perhaps hoping for another safety car. I can't believe we haven't had another safety car, Sam. We, uh, and one thing we haven't seen is a shot of what's going on at the Degna. And that is the leader of the GT300 category heading into the pits. The K-Tunes RCF has also finally made its stop. Now, I'm amazed that, that this, yeah, as you say, the safety car hasn't come out. I mean, it was a big impact at Degna, but we're just racing here. As uh, Daiki Sasaki gets his own goal. He's already, yeah, he gets beaten up by the k -Hin now because he's still waiting for those tyres to come in in the Calsonic Blue Car Team Impul Nissan GTR GT500. There is the GT300 leader and this pit stop means Hatsune Miku inherits the lead. So People are going to be happy about her getting out the front. Yeah, Lexus uh, giving away the lead to the AMG as we're uh, at the half distance point of the Suzuka 300. All four boots for the uh, Saitama Toyo Pet sponsored Lexus. Saitama Toyo Pet sponsor a whole bunch of different cars in Super GT and they run their own, which is the Mark X. Lovely rumble from the 5 litre V8 in that Lexus. It left Isn't it? It's really sort of low frequency, almost NASCAR esque as he pulled away there. I like a bit of NASCAR. Everyone loves a bit of NASCAR. Uh, not everybody. Oh, come on. If you, if, you, if you can't watch around at somewhere like Bristol and not get it, then you don't deserve to be a fan. Daytona 500 is an epic, epic race. I wonder how like, these GT500s would do on the banking at Daytona. That would be pretty cool to see. There was a rumour, and in fact more than a rumour, at one point that the GT300 cars were going to be... Slightly odd line there. The GT300 cars were going to be invited to take part in the Rolex 24 at Daytona. Which, yeah, the, the regulations aren't a thousand miles apart, you know. The um, GTD cars running to a similar specification to a, uh, a GT3 car, and the GT300s here, yeah, running a similar spec to a, a GT3 car, or actually are a GT3 car in some of the um, uh, some of the forms. Now, the reason we're running a 300-kilometer race here at Suzuka this weekend is that the usual thousand-kilometer race has been. Up there, yeah, it? just straight snatch, just pulled it backwards and away from the barrier there. So, yeah, brilliant job by the marshals there to clear up the, what was a, um, a, a sizable shunt. So, sorry, Sam, talked to you. That's right. No, no, I just, no, I just noticed to, to it, Mark X is up to six. Wow. I'm getting those feet that high up the time. The <laughs> yeah, the reason we've got a 300 kilometer race here at Suzuka this year is that the annual 1,000 kilometers race for Super GT will not be taking place. However, there is a new 10-hour race run by SRO to GT300 regulations. Not just GT3, GT300. So you will see some of the carbon fiber GT86 take part, possibly the Prius, possibly this Subaru. They, they haven't confirmed their participation as yet. And they're marketing it hard, the SRO, and we're going to see cars such as the KCMG, um, uh, well, both the GTRs, yeah. Both the Nissan GTRs and KCMG coming across from the uh, Blanc Pan Asia series uh, to take part in that, as well as some teams coming down from Europe. The prize money on offer for that race is huge. The Blanc Pan Asia series, of course, if you haven't watched it before, it's GT3 cars, and you can watch it, of course, where can you watch it? Live on Nismo TV. Boom! Uh, Sugio Matsuda, I think, has been has been racing for KCMG in the new spec Nissan GTR, but I think his gear might be up in that car due to clashes with Super GT. And I'm just checking my facts. Yes, indeed, it was. So, so Sugio Matsuda will be replaced in that KCMG car by somebody else. Which RJ O'Connell will probably update you on on Super GT World if he hasn't already done so in the chat. Uh, looking at the Arter NSX as he makes his way through the snake. The Ray Brig car really as close as we've seen him now. Uh, so there's our field, the uh, AU Tom's car. Uh, only one not to have made a pit stop really out of the uh, leading protagonists. Uh, but this is the battle that we want to see on track between the orange Honda and the blue Honda. And that is the battle. We were watching for a little while the real-time battle for GT300 front runners, which was the battle for 11th and 10th position. As we get a quick look at the pair of Gainer, Tanax, Nissan GTRs, both of those are the new specification Nissan GTR. 
for 2018. These new spec GT3 cars have picked up quite a lot actually because there's one of them at Silverstone. Yeah, I'm really looking forward. RJN. I'm looking forward to seeing how the one at Silverstone goes. Traditionally, the um, Nismo GTRs have gone well around Silverstone. The, the fast sweeps, uh, Maggots, Beckets, and Chapel really suit the characteristics of the car. And in previous years of Blancpain, we've seen the car running right at the pointy end and big lumps of tyre rubber dropping off the Honda NSX there as they come yeah, down the really down the long straight into the 130R. Lots of marbles offline, and during the safety car period, one of the marshals has popped out and picked up that piece of carbon debris that was just offline there. Someone did obviously go and pick up that. So lump of stuff at 130R. Coming soon to eBay, as found on the outside of the 130R, one careful owner. A little bit of debris on the inside of uh, the final turn there. The final turn at Suzuka doesn't have a name, does it? No, turn 18, I remember going there years ago and thinking, oh, what's this one called? Uh, and no, uh, just turn 18, but there we see the, uh, the Tom's team ready for the uh, AU car coming in with four tyres ready at their pit box. That corner where Timo Glock, I think it was. Ooh, Yamamoto <laughs> thought he could get up the inside there, but clearly hadn't noticed there was a Prius in the way. And there is still a Prius in the way, which is battling with the Golf Porsche. And again, we just see an illustration of how much time you can gain or lose in traffic. The cars were almost side by side as they were coming through turn five and six, and now, it's a second. Uh, yeah, 150 metres between them. That is literally down to the Prius not... Well, the Prius was looking in its mirrors. It's down to the drivers of GT500 because they've got so much more power and grip to get around the GT300s. Yamamoto in the blue car, he'll be furious and we uh, pushing super hard now to bring that gap back down. Najiri, Yamamoto battling, but the Arta NSX is leading in if not on the timing screens, is kind of leading because this car had made its pit stop, but it has now the AU Tom's Lexus. Four tyres going on that. Kaz Nakajima jumps out. Nakajima always does that. He jumps out and just goes straight to the back of the garage. Doesn't sort of turn around, loiter, linger, look at the car like some of them do. He just, no, I'm out yeah. the car, I'm gone. Done. He goes back into his charging pod. I love the fact you think he lives in a charging pod and Toyota just bring him out and plug him into LMP1 car one weekend, GT500 car another weekend. They do, it's, it's like the Borg, I've seen it. It just, it just sits there and they just switch him on. It's like Stefan Sarazan, they've got one for him as well. <laughs> they? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Of course, Nissan's innovation for that driver development is much better given the PlayStation. It's worked. We've got drivers across the globe now competing. Um, of course, Ricardo Sanchez coming from the American continent. Florian Strauss racing in the Far East here. We've got Jensen Button racing. Guys, Lucas Ordonez racing today at Silverstone. All from that GT Academy uh, bedroom gamer program. Oh, the Epson Honda goes the long way around. The AU car runs out lap there. And I think uh, Nismo Nick is out in the Micro Cup as well. There we go. Big Nicholas fan of the Hamman, Micro Cup. Haman, Haman. Hammond? Yeah, Nick Hammond. Hammond. Yeah. Yeah, really super nice guy. Really wise individual. And <laughs> our producer went, and Jan. Jan's not in the Micro Cup, much as he'd like to be. Uh, Jan, Jan would Jan. love to be in the Micro Cup. If Jan could get some way of getting from here to there, he'd do it. Uh, he'd totally be up for it. But someone who is totally up for it is the 100 Raybrick NSX. You can see it on your screen. Look at the timing differences. All it takes is one slightly slow GT300 getting in the way. And this is what happens. Oh. Battle for the lead at Suzuka. And oh, hit the car. Oh, both of them Blimey. hit too hard. Yeah, the rear visibility out of the Lamborghini there is traditionally poor. And Yamamoto, his left rear corner there, collected by the um, Lamborghini. But no detriment, no bodywork rubbing by the look of it. So we'll just have to uh, uh, keep an eye on his pace. But visibly, he still looks very, very quick. Question coming in. Where's Jensen Button? Probably in the back of the garage. Yep. Having a cup of tea or whatever you drink when you get out of a racing car in. Oh, he's reached that age now where he, he would like a nice brew. 
you know, the, when you're a young career aspiring driver, you'll be heading for some sort of recovery shake. Whereas Jensen's been there and done it, you know, 15 F1 starts around Suzuka. He'll be just going for the uh, Yorkshire Tea, I reckon. Driving moral hazard penalty for... Oh, this we maneuver. didn't see this. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know which of the drivers was, but went hard into the back of the Forum Engineering GTR. And I suspect that was Rossiter, actually, earlier in the race. So, already Rossiter proving that he is again a moral hazard. See him at the weekend, so uh, remind him. But this battle for the lead in GT500, it's Honda on Honda, the Arte NSX, which has led from the lights out. Honda. But alongside it, the Raybrick NSX. Honda on Honda at the home of Honda. Remember the track here owned by the Honda Motor Corporation and um, 20 laps to go. Yeah, it'd be nice if Nissan came in and you know, stole it, yes. Soiled the carpet, so to speak. It's the uh, Ray Rig NSX. Is, is, now, is that car keeping back a little way just to have a build up to something or are they just running at consistent times and he's just hoping to capitalise on something like this yeah bingo that's going to that's going to cost him dear oh, but it also trips the Raybury car slightly for the second element of the triangle and uh, he's not going to get a chance in sector one unless there's a this is one of those races where you need the tracker of all the car positions on the lap isn't it they have on the pit walls you need, you need to see where all these GT300s are because there's an ebb and flow of Super GT races particularly when there's been a safety car, where you end up like we've got the period for these race leaders now, where they're out in clean air and it's like they've got to the track to themselves. Yeah. And I'm then suddenly it's like M25 Dartford Tunnel on Friday night. Part of me really, really wants to see where Daiki Sasaki is now, because he'll have got his tyres up to temperature. We saw him lose a couple of positions, but we know he'll be there or thereabouts, and um, he'll be pushing really hard. Uh, Nick, uh, Nick Hamam is not in the right cup. Oh, that's a shame. He should be. Boom. And they're clearly listening to me. There is Daiki Sasaki right on the back of the uh, um, Kahin car. Who's driving that? The Kahin. Yeah, the, um, the gentleman whose name is on the screen there. Who's Sukakoshi. Sukakoshi. Very good. Yeah. I get put off by the top, by the silent uh, the start. Su. Su. As in tsunami. Yes. Yeah. Sukakoshi, okay. Or Su, which is on the other side of the bay from Suzuka. Sasaki looking really uh, aggressive coming through the clipping point of turn 11, the hairpin there. Flash of the lights from Sasaki. No, I'm nowhere near, sorry. It will be the it will be the Cahin NSX from my perspective. Sasaki losing a little bit behind the RCF there though at uh, the top of the hill, turn 14. I'm just trying to think, is the team Impul the blue car you can see on the screen there driven by Daiki Sasaki at Daiki Wolf 23 on Twitter and Jan Mardenborough who I think is just at Jan Mardenborough Jan the man Jan the man on Twitter but the is spelled incorrectly there's a puncture there for the number 21 so Mita has problems on the right rear in GT300 that's what you get for well they've corrected their sticker you see but yeah, right, right rear now. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that's not a massively loaded tyre. Could have just picked up a random spurious puncture, but yeah. uh, there, Richard Lyons waiting in the pits. Always grumpy about it, though, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, they haven't changed driver. So um, coming in to do uh, uh, a fuel stop, take tyres, obviously, with a puncture and do their driver change, but a very, very slow in lap will have uh, cost them a huge amount of time. Now, if you're enjoying this action live from Suzuka, don't forget there's more action coming up on Nismo TV, Micro Cup we've talked about, and Block Pan Endurance Series from Silverstone. Stay tuned. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Tell us your comments. We've got a great number of you, but only we need to get to a thousand likes, don't we? Really? What are we going to offer for a, a thousand likes? A holiday at your flat, or no? That would be like a prison sentence. So you'll have, to, you'll have to assemble cheap plan furniture. <laughs> As Hatsune Miku comes in for some new rubber out of the lead of GT300. And she will get a new driver to go with that rubber. 
where will she feed back out into the field? Very long lap 33. Yeah, they have, stint. yeah they have gone particularly long. Now that we, they had a good look around the front right of the car. No, but look at the tyre changes. Yeah. So, so they the, haven't the guy changed. on the right front came in, had a look. Yep. And the guy on the left front now is having a look, but... They need to finish that driver change. No, right. no, no change. They did not change tyres on the Zero Hatsune Miku car. Will it put a good smile on their faces when they see where they feed back out on track? Those GT500 cars, they don't matter unless you're watching the GT500 race. This could be a brilliant move because that set of Yokohamas will still be at 70 degrees. They'll still be red hot. Yep. So he can come out of the pit lane. He'll be on it from the word go. And it's knob okay. at the wheel. No one better. Um, and the... I'm just looking to see where he's fed back out. He... I think... I think they've they've kept the lead there, Sam. I think they might have done. No, they haven't. Mintilla's got it. Has he? Right, there's, okay. a Nissan G there's a Nissan GTR leading GT300, the Shokumu, which is a hair tonic of some description, I believe. So they fed out into second position on the track ahead of that car there, the uh, the yellow 86. Uh, meanwhile, at the head of the field now, this battle for the lead is still ebbing and flowing through the GT300 lap cars. Yeah, it's, it's got... It's, the, the nature of the way these car, two cars are moving, the way they're sort of driving around, it does look to me a little bit like the driver of the 100 is biding his time rather than making a concerted attack to get the lead at this point. It looks like Yamamoto can bring the gap down really easily, but then he's just waiting, holding a watching brief. Now this Audi R8, they're going to catch him at the fastest part of the track. They look excited. That's because it's tense. Now he's making the move. Look, that GT300 got right in the way, and the Raybrick NSX is right on the back of the Arter Autobacks car. But that just got the Arter Autobacks car. Just again, good drive out of the final chicane. Yeah, really good drive. Um, a, a much lighter car. The Raybrick car running 34 kilos of ballast, and the Arter car almost nothing, only six. And that's going to make a big difference. These success ballasts you see in Super GT. Never been a big fan of success ballasts, but it seems to work. All bit, bit bulked there. The 100 got held up by, by that white and black Lexus. Yeah, balance of performance is always something that people never really look forward to talking about. But um, success ballast, the fuel flow, look, it, it, it clearly works and it does a good job and um, uh, keeps things fresh and exciting. And we're seeing a car leading today that previously has been at the tail of the GT500 and the, the 23 which was which has been the class of the field so far this year running now down in the mid pack the kind of ebb and flow of the series over the course of the um, season but I, I know what you I know what you mean balance of performance is never something straightforward and easy to understand well what's looking pretty balanced to the mother chassis car number 18 the up garage GT86 is really doing a good job of fighting with Hatsune Miku for that second position. Kobayashi trying everything to get around Tanaguchi. Now, is he going to do something clever and try and position that Epson NSX, which is desperately trying to get past them, the GT500? And the up garage car just is not making it easy for that GT500 to pass. It's uh, cost the Epson car a huge amount of time. I wish they'd switch the head like this. Not a regulation here in Super GT to have your headlights on at all times, like it is in some other series. It's quite good to have headlights on. It just makes the car slightly more visible in traffic. But uh, you know, if you're if you're leading and you're, you're 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 in a strong position, you don't feel it it warrants it. Then no. And this uh, is now off. This is now officially the battle for the leaders, unseen by us. But the uh, Shokumo Hair Clinic GTR has pitted. These two scrapping for the lead in real. This is real racing for the lead. So actually Both quite classes. impressive. It's well exactly, but it's quite impressive from the up garage car to get onto terms with Atsuni Miku here. And the up garage car, I think, to be in this position, and maybe also did we didn't see its pit stop, but also didn't take any tyres. And those mother chassis GT86s are notoriously kind on their tyres. Remember last season, no. 
season before at Thailand, Jan Mardenbrook fighting in his GT3 Nissan GTR to get onto terms with the number 25 GT86 and not being able to do it. Yeah, the um, Mercedes running on its uh, Yokohamas, the AMG, beg your pardon, running on its uh, Yokohamas, um, they will get tired towards the end of the race. It's going to be almost two hours in duration, this race, by the time the 52 laps are completed. And these tyres are not really designed to do more than about an hour and a half. So um, the Hatsune Miku AMG has its work cut out to hold the little 86 off for the remaining laps. And here we see back to the split screen because we've got a battle for the lead in both classes. Exactly. Najiri from Yamamoto in GT500. Miko from Up Garage in GT300. And they're both, they were all together all at the same time. So I'll watch the GT300 because it's on my side of the screen. Robin, you look, watch the GT500. I think Yamamoto is going to go for it here. This is as close as we've seen him. And yeah, the producer thinks the same. So we flick back to the GT500 full screen coverage. And Yamamoto down the inside into turn one. No, he just showed him his nose. Yeah, Yamamoto now, it's, it is like he's suddenly woken up, he's seen the opportunity and he's going to go for it. And there's two battling GT300 cars. It's Mintzilla and Sean Walkinshaw's BMW. Though Sean Walkinshaw isn't on them anymore, but look how close they are. Mintzilla has held them up. The minty green Nissan GTR and GT300 has got out of the way, but it, that was beneficial to Yamamoto, clearly. I know I'm meant to be commentating, but there was one point there for at least 15 seconds. I held my breath and put my hand over my mouth as we go back to the split screen there it was very tight through the s's for the gt500 lead it's now we go even tighter into the casio triangle for the gt300 lead and uh, the fact that the tv producer must be pulling his hair out if he had any um he would be absolutely pushing it flat out to work out which battle to watch because we've got the gt300 on the screen but i know that the gt500 is just as close as this for the overall lead of the race what was interesting to see on that shot was just how the AMG drew away in a straight line. But the up garage 86, look at this round the outside of turn one. Has he made it stick? Not quite. The, oh, up, the up garage car pulled out and sent it in real lunge from a long, long way back. So a significant advantage on the brake from the little 86, but um, a, a straight line advantage from the torque of the um, AMG. And again there, side by side through turn five, big slide from the Mercedes as he makes his way up through turn seven. And it's, you know, the narrow nature of the Suzuka circuit means it is extremely difficult to overtake, but these guys are going to manage to do it sooner rather than later. So not this corner, not the next right-hand kink, but the next one is where we could see the Toyota make its move. And it depends on the brake specifications. I think the Mercedes probably better on the brakes than the GT86, as we see there, there's a bit of a gap. But on the drive out here, the 86 I believe to be a bit better, which is exactly what we're seeing. So will he have a run now into Spoon, the longer corner, where it's less critical on the braking? The Mercedes clearly working its tyres hard. The Cahin car is... Ah, drive through. Moral hazard penalty for... What's he done here? Oh. Go. Oh, that was morally hazardous. Rear-ending the Wacos car to get through. Yeah, just a little... They call bump, that bump and run, don't uh, they? Bump pass, yeah. Legal in NASCAR, not so much in Super GT. Can you imagine the moral driving hazard penalties in NASCAR? Meanwhile, coming out of the 130R into the Casio Triangle again for the lead. Yeah, but that's third position side. behind them. He's come from nowhere, hasn't he? The, the battling pair of cars ahead. They're That's really the, holding each other up. And so. We know that k -Tunes Lexus behind them. This is the top three in GT300 fighting for the lead of the race. And the fourth position is just behind them. There's the Subaru. And fifth, there's the Hoppy 86. So this is the, the GT300 battle being played out. Well, as a battle being played out. <laughs> the Hoppy 86 is... Uh, has, has recovered significantly. We saw that car dropping back over the opening few laps of the race. I thought he disappeared into no man's land, but no, recovered now, and we're going to have five for the lead within two laps here, Sam. Has Kobayashi spotted the danger behind him? I'm not sure he has. He's focused. Oh, yeah, he'll have spotted him. He's, He's seen got, it now. He'll have got his headlights on. Two Ooh. wheels on the grass trying to get past the 86 there from the Lexus. I love all these different sorts of cars racing each other. All you need to do is throw in a Prius and it would be fantastic. But they aren't very competitive here for Great some chance. reason today. Easy 
enjoying it. Mario Nitta, fastest lap of the race so far, I think still. Perhaps someone's gone quicker. Arjo Ocon will be able to update us on that. But yeah, the Subaru is now joined the training. The Hoppy 86 has joined the training. This, the so if you looked at the GT300 battle right now, one thing seems certain, it ain't going to finish how it's looking. You'd be very pleased with yourself if you controlled the balance of performance as well, because this is what the fans have come to see at this fan festival event, and the, you know, the, the crowds are being properly entertained by door-to-door, -door, wheel wheel-to-wheel racing in both classes. Uh, Rab says, thanks for all the likes. Rab is one of our producers, says thanks for all the likes, and we'll, if we get 5,000 likes, we'll celebrate on Studio Cam. What do you want us to do? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I mean. Anyway, three wide for the lead coming into the uh, final. Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's around the outside. Bib is off. Oh, he's on the grass. He was going from, trying to go from third to the lead in one, two corners. Lexus RCFs are good cars. They're very good at many, many things, but they're genuinely rubbish at off-roading. And, uh, yeah, that's really cost him. The 86 has dropped back. He's, uh, there's now... Well, yeah, look, the, the, the two bigger GT3 cars now heading a trio of 86s. No, no, it's two 86s and a BRZ. You have three different yeah. types of car built to three different rule books. Subaru, BRZ, GT86. But what you, you have say tomato, I say tomato. I say FIA GT3, FIA GT3, Jaff GT300, followed by Mother Chassis GT300. Production-based, 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 carbon fiber monocoque made up. <laughs> and the, the hoppy out of the trio looking really aggressive. Yeah, but it's got to be disappointing for the up garage car. It was battling for the lead. And now finds himself in P4. Yeah. That K-Tunes Lexus, though, is extremely racy. The BRZ, well, the engine hasn't blown up yet, so it's still going. Yeah, up garage going. A little defensive there in the yellow 86 and the, the hoppy car seems to have the advantage of traction on the way out of the hairpin. Miku trying to defend her honour from a horde, a growing horde. Very enthusiastic GT300s. The battling 86 is at the back. The, well, the up garage car is now clearly holding up the hoppy, the number 25 hoppy car. Hoppy, in case you're wondering, is sort of a non-alcoholic beery thing which you mix with salt you alcohol with ice and it's very refreshing. If you like that sort of thing. Coming down the long back straight, coming down into the iconic 130R. If you're wondering what the R in the corner stands for, it stands for R, isn't it quick? No, not really. It stands for uh, radius. The 130 is the radius in metres of the curve, so a super, super fast flat out left hander. Now, Deadeye 313 is definitely enjoying this race. And yes, Deadeye, it is that good. But this is Super GT live on Nismo TV. 40 laps completed for the GT500 pack, but right now we are watching a five-way scrap for the lead in the GT300 category. There is also a fairly epic battle going on for the re lead in GT500, but this is the better battle. At the moment, we will cut over to GT500 so when that gets really spicy. And I'm sure it is. Battle where seven tenths separates the Raybrig NSX from the Arthur NSX at the head of this field from the keeper Tom's Lexus in third position. But look at this, he's tried to get up the inside, he's got it to work. The hoppy. Oh, no, he hasn't. No. Uh, tried a move, but no. Failed and. Uh, Here comes yeah. the Subaru. Coming down into the uh, two Degners, the first faster one, now the second slower one. All really tight closed up behind the Lexus there and the uh, AMG half a car length to breathe at the head of that um, cluster of cars a tiny bit of relief for Hatsune Miku but look at this pack of four cars behind her the 25 poppy car now has got the move done pretty much that's a long right hand sweep and that puts him in front of the up garage 86 but the up garage car is almost certain to have a run up the end into this left hander at Spoon no he didn't do it uh, the hoppy car we saw there. Oh, but that's coming, not going to help. He's put two wheels in the grass. Coming through turn 12. Um, he did have an advantage of traction the previous lap, and he, he made it stick this lap. So keep an eye on the uh, white and pink 86 there, the one that we're looking at now. Things are hotting up at Suzuka. The air temperature is up to 26 degrees, 5 degrees hotter than it was when this race started. And there's five cars battling. 
each one of them is a degree of victory there for the Lexus going around the outside of Hatsune Miku into the final chicane. Will she come back at him down into turn one? I'm not sure she can, but yes, she is. Side by side as they come down the start of finish line here in Suzuka. Fantastic racing. So which car? It's a Japanese versus German drag race. I can't help but think those uh, slightly older tyres on the Mercedes are now starting to um, hinder the, uh, the grip levels as the Lexus makes the move and then is just drawing away at the, uh, the head of the field here. Now the K-Tunes Lexus, the number 96 car, which was super quick from pole position, looks like it's going to disappear off into the distance at the moment. Ten laps to go for the GT500, the Arthur NSX still leads, but GT300 is far from a done deal. The BRZ now under pressure from the number 25, Hoppy 86. If that car can clear this pack, will he be able to provide a challenge yeah he needs to clear him quickly because Nakayama is making good his escape in the Lexus he's got what seven or eight car lengths now uh, between him and the AMG behind him P2 and this is the battle between those who changed tyres and those who didn't well here's two cars that did change tyres that is the battle for the lead in GT500 about to encounter the battle for the lead in GT300 and that could change everything. You did say the director would cut back when it got spicy and it doesn't get any spicier than the pair of leading GT500 cars coming up against five scrapping GT300 cars for their class lead. Now if you're liking this race don't forget to hit like and subscribe here on Nismo TV. Five cars battling for the lead of GT300 two cars battling for the lead of GT500 and there are both battles all together muddled up on the run down to 130R. Lights flashing frantically at the back of Hatsune Miku and the slotting in in front of the Subaru. But there goes the k -Hin up the end and off the track goes the Hoppy 86, losing the position to the up garage 86. All that hard work put into um, gaining that position and a big run wide out of the 130R cost the, the Hoppy car uh, a positioning class and Obviously taking the run across the grass will cover the hot slicks in all manner of debris, so a little bit of um, time lost there for that car. Katsuni Miku didn't change her rubber at the pit stop and she's running out of tyres. Look at Jensen Button's face. He's as thrilled as everybody else watching this. Now round the outside, it's the two race leaders together, but look in the, in the mirrors, the Ray Brig NSX is right on the turn. Oh, he's been blocked! The leader of GT300 blocked the second position car in GT500. It wasn't on purpose. No, Yamamoto being relatively careful there. He could have fired it around the outside a little sooner, but no, he realises this is a, uh, a terrific team position they find themselves in. He'll be trying to get as many points as they possibly can for their, um, for their championship campaign, whilst also just biding his time and waiting as, as we see 10 laps to go now around Suzuka. Uh, the K-Tunes RCF has checked out from the front of the GT300 lead pack. The battle for second is absolutely raging. I'd quite like to go back and watch some more of that, actually. Just, good, it? Just there watching this, these lead two cars to go. Ten laps to go for this pair. And as many laps as the GT300s can do in the, that amount of time. Jiri coming into a little bit of clean air. He'll be a good deal more relaxed than he was uh, uh, this time, one minute 52 seconds ago, when he was in that big gaggle of cars coming down into this super fast left hander. This is a classic Super GT. There is the battle for second position in GT300. The Subaru now trying to get a run on Hatsune Miku, and then those battling 86s behind. This is damage limitation now for the AMG not going to get on the podium at this rate. Round the outside goes the BRZ. It doesn't quite make that stick, but that will open up the opportunity for that. The up garage 86 get on the back. The hoppy car's dropped back slightly there. Yeah, the hoppy car, I think, is still struggling to overcome the um, uh, time loss that it uh, had only a lap ago, running wide out of the 130R. And uh, Hoppy's weaving his tyres. He's losing. Yeah, you're right. He's lost his tyres. Driver's feeling he hasn't got tyre temperature. I think he's lost that. The tyre's worn out. Yeah, possibly, possibly. But we, we said it would be marginal with a, a race of almost two hours in length. It's going to be, it will be, it will be spot on two hours looking at the clock. 
Yep, we think it's that tense as well. We know the Subaru chassis works well here at Suzuka, winning the race 1,000 kilometers last year. But right now, there is no guarantee that any of these cars will get on the podium. From a driver's perspective, looking at this, thinking, where would I like to be? Would I like to be in the slightly heavier um, AMG with very, very used tyres, or would I prefer to be in the slightly more nimble 86s? You know, I think I will go for the latter. Well, they, need, they all need to be looking in at their mirrors because battle is being joined. You may have spotted a Lamborghini and another Lexus behind this pack. They're just at the top of the screen. Those are the cars in sixth and seventh position. It's going to be a, a train of cars with Hatsune Miku as the driver of the train shortly. And the blue 86 holding uh, a watching brief behind the AMG now will look to, as he did last time, position the car very aggressively coming uh, into the final tight chicane. And that Lamborghini is getting ever closer. Look, there it is, the Mika Lamborghini, and that's the Petronas-sponsored Lexus. And I can't quite see what the car behind that is, but I think that is indeed the car in eighth as well. It's one of the AMGs. Suni Miko takes a, takes a defensive line at the... Casio Triangle at the, the final tight chicane there at uh, turns 15, 16 and 17. And at eight to go for GT500. Yam, not the Yam Modern Brew, it's Daiki Sasaki there in the GT500. Get out on his own. P4 though, good, um, good great, great day for them. Great strong run and uh, uh, a good haul of championship points, he said, touching wood as we cut back to our leading pair of Hondas. Now we've seen this with the Ray Brick car just sits back for a bit thinks about it and then when the opportunity presents itself attacks the Arter NSX like crazy and the Arter NSX there lost the, lost the apex slightly. I don't know if that was a driver error or is the Arter beginning to use up its tyres as well? Certainly the um, the, the tyres will be uh, well past their best now and you know, as the race leader, you will have been pushing fairly hard. No doubt these mid-engined carbon monocoque cars are quite kind on their tyres. We can see the drivers at the start of their stint working the tyres hard to generate heat. But um, the Poppy cars now trying to get a run on the up garage car again. Regain that position he lost when he sort of exited stage left. Two holes on the second. And holds up the pack. There's uh, the GT500 front runners now coming back through that pack again oh, and um, Suzuki and Matsu deciding to use the grass side and inspiring the hobby car to be likewise but just I'm keeping an eye out for that Lamborghini which is there it is there's the Lexus and we know how quick those Lexus are as well the uh, the one that was battling with these guys has just checked out at the head of the field so the the pole sitting K-Tunes car has come through past and gone and will we see the Petronas car do that? Now that grey and red, oh, up the inside, I was about to say that grey and red AMG is a lap down and was about to get involved in the lead battle in that class. Nob Taniguchi holding off Iguchi in the BRZ. The 286s haven't given up on that. There's that Lamborghini is getting very, very close now. It's the Leon Mercedes just behind them, so this is... 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th from GT300 all running around on the same piece of track with the GT500s trying to work their way through this pack. Miku is... and there's Bumblebee, the GTR, that's a lap down as well. I think that's, uh, that car's got a problem, so going very, yeah. very slowly offline. So. And look, wheel to wheel, they touch! Did they touch the BRZ and Miku? ever so tight here we are coming round the long left hander at turn seven and we have a train uh, well it's far more in time than the anything that was on my line because the uh, up garage car is going around the outside of the BRZ hasn't got that to stick but the Hoppy's having a run on the up garage as a result gets up the inside of Degna but here's the Lamborghini right on the tail of the pair of them the Lamborghini's now the Manipa Lamborghini's got into the fight the Leon Mercedes is right there as is the Lexus and we're looking at well yeah the, and the Manipa Lamborghini now is joined the battle there's the Lexus there's the Leon Mercedes and there's two more cars behind them that are in this battle there's the Petrona sponsored Lexus as well the uh, Lamborghini using the torque from the huge big V10 engine there to 
make a move coming out of the Degnus to take that position and uh, as you said Sam so accurately only a couple of laps ago we've got to keep our eye on the Lamborghini and he's on the move cutting through that pack of 86s yeah and that, uh, both the look out for the Lyon Mercedes and the Petrona sponsored Lexus as well Hatsune Miku has got a little bit of relief six laps to go for GT500 but she doesn't want to look in her mirrors no Gamu Nob Taniguchi in. he'll look up and just see oh, a mirror full of Subaru 86 Lamborghini Lexus 86 and that other Mercedes AMG as they nearly touch going into the final chicane surely they touch they do the BRZ and Hatsune Miku wheel to wheel here comes the number 25 Poppy 86 there's the Manipa Lamborghini this racing is absolutely epic now it's a big NASCAR style train of cars down the start finish line two trains of cars there's a GT500 in the back of it it's the craft sports car the Subaru has another run at it, but he's going to open the door for the Hoppy 86 to get round Willie. No, not quite, but here's the Lamborghini. This is fantastic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars here. And Hatsune Miku, Nob Taniguchi there, making his AMG impossibly wide, going defensive on the pit straight and doing a brilliant job on those old tyres, Sam, to keep the other cars at bay. And there we see the... GT500, GTR kicking up the that's, mud as he that's makes Chio his way at the through. wheel of that car. Chio running at maximum attack still as he makes his way through the GT300 field. He's got a spectacular view of this just epic battle. As the Leon Mercedes is struggling with the four of engineering GT500 coming through. There's the Epson NSX as well. If you haven't clicked like, if you're watching this at home and you haven't clicked like, why? What's there not to like? We ask you to click like and subscribe. Just think about it. Think about why we love Super GT. And just look at this brilliant, brilliant multi-class GT racing at one of the world's finest venues. What's not to like? Boom, bob that button. Do you know, when I watch Super GT like this, I feel a bit spoiled. I tried to watch a DTM race the other day and I just couldn't get into it. <laughs> no. I was like, where are the GT300 cars? Well, I, 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 I watched it and said, oh, there's not very many of them. Yeah, exactly. Or if you watch British touring cars, for example, great racing, but oh, they're going really slow. Now. And these are super fast cars. GT 500s are LMP1 fast. GT 300s are roughly GTE, the top GT AM cars, or the old GTE Pro cars with new regulations. But trying again on Hatsune Miku, the Super. He's trying around the outside. He's got it. But will Miku hold on to third position? Oh, there's a Honda NSX GT 500. Wait, well they're happy. Delight on the Subaru pit wall as the BRZ, the blue BRZ, makes his move. Um, Nob Taniguchi goes super defensive uh, to hold the. Um, That's the Hoppy 86, the, the Hoppy but 86. no, no. defence there. It's gone. Miku's, Miku's tyres have gone, but will the 86 be able to get onto the back of the BRZ and do something about that? And still don't forget about that Manipa Lamborghini. There it is. It's got past, I think. No, that's the Hoppy. Manipa Lamborghini is right on the tail of Miku right now. There it is. And there's that Petronas sponsored Lexus. But there's Suboy. He's a very quick driver. Want to watch the future, I think. Yeah, show Suboy really fast and consistent and uh, yeah, doing a great job. A uh, thousand likes just gone over the, the thousand mark market. Yeah, absolutely. Hashtag Four laps to go. Bash that button. Yeah. That button. Brilliant. Thank you. Bash that button. The Giri, we'd almost forgotten about these guys actually in GT500. It's not like that isn't a close battle as well. The Giri no, leading. No, the Giri's checked out. Where's oh, the, he has, yeah. The, is that the tyres Where's the Raybrick car? There it is. Okay, so that gap has gone out from uh, half a second to three and a half Yeah, I mean, look at the lap times. 152.9 plays 151.5 on lap 48. So we, over a second lap. Mm, we did see a little bit of contact earlier with the um, Lamborghini and the Raybrick car. No initial damage, no tracking issues, didn't knock the suspension at all, but um, just wondering if uh, perhaps he's having to save fuel. Possibly four laps to go. We could, could be, be into yeah. lift and coast mode. I think uh, it's looking, more like the tyres have gone, though. Possibly, yeah. The Arter NSX from wide of the clipping point there again at the hairpin. Uh, questions, as always, questions coming in about their third position. Keeper Tom's car, Hirakawa, is hunting down second position as well. Four to go, can he do it? Lots of people talking about, as usual, talking about the relative pace of these GT500 cars and just how fast they are. Well, using Fuji Speedway as a measure, 
These cars are as quick or slightly quicker than an Audi R18 of 2014 vintage running around Fuji Speedway and probably are around the same pace as the Baikoles LMP1 or the new generation of Ginettas and the Lara P1 cars as the Motul Ortec GTR is sitting in fifth position but Segiuchi is not willing to let that stand. Fifth position from the back of the grid carrying 54 kilos of ballast with that fuel flow. What a result from the 23 car. Oh, and they did they touch? That's well, they will very, do in a minute. Very, very close coming out uh, through turn 14 onto the back straight. And they are side by side into 130R, but the AU Tom's car has the advantage. But will Suge Matsuda have a run down into the chicane? It's a good overtaking spot, but it's difficult to do. He's not going to do it because, but quite rightly, the AU Tom's car went defensive. Nick Cassidy sitting there with his teammate Nakajima. There are two Tom's cars. They are painted quite differently. The AU Tom's car and the Keeper Tom's car. Second position is Suboy. Even sixth position, though, the from the... But second position is Suboy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. There we Neatly go. Neatly done. Yeah, round the inside. And, yeah, just positioned this car really wisely on the way in and made the move stick. Just going back to the GT500 uh, battle, Sam, the, the, the 23 car to come from the back of the grid has done a brilliant job there. And sixth position will be a good haul of championship points going into this sort of early summer break now. Yeah, we'll be back for the short race, 250 kilometers at Chang International Speedway, or Buriram. Keeps changing its name. Uh, I think it's whether or not you're allowed to say the name of an alcoholic, delicious beverage um, uh, or not. Uh, obviously, in some countries, alcohol uh, restrictions on advertising mean that it has to be known as Buriram, but Chang, obviously, who knows? It says Chang on my list, so it's Chang to me. <laughs> there we go. Never tried the beverage in question, so can't, can't vouch for it either way. But the battle in GT300, we are kind of watching the wrong cars at the moment. Um, I know there's only three laps to go. The K-Tunes RCF has checked out at the front of GT300, and the Arter NSX has checked out at the front of GT500. However, in GT300, the battle for second, third, fourth, fifth, etc., is still absolutely raging. Now we saw, now what are we seeing here? Oh! Ah, the AU car going off on the exit of turn seven. GT500 cross. Uh, so has that allowed Matsuda back through? Must have done. Into fifth. Absolutely must have done. Well, Nakajima doesn't seem too fast by here, does it? Yes, it, uh, no, it hasn't. No, so he's held the so position. So how's he not? How's he managed to hold that position? I mean, the... Well, not okay, quite Let's sure. just have a little look, see if there's any oil down. Um, we've seen lap times falling away, and... I was Two just wondering if go. there was a little bit of oil down there, maybe, but... Mm, interesting. What we haven't seen in the GT300 battle is just as I was about to say, what we hadn't seen was that the Lamborghini was right on the tail of Hatsune Miku and about to be released, and that's exactly what's happened. The Mita Manipa Lamborghini gets past, as does the Petronas Lexus. The number 25 up garage 86 has faded a bit, but the Leon Mercedes is right there as well. But Hatsune Miku, the good team Good Smile Racing, clearly not their day. Getting free wide into the triangle, that's not going to work, but Miku is out of it for today. But will that Lamborghini now be able to set off in the, these final two laps and get on to terms with the Subaru? Gamu in the Leon Mercedes pulls up alongside the sister car of uh, Hatsune Miku. The older tyres on the more colourful white and pink car really starting to show their age now as the uh, as Gamu in the black car cuts by into turn one. That strategy just hasn't worked for not not stopping the tyres. They didn't last. Nob Taniguchi not able to succeed this time for Hatsune Miku down in eighth in a few laps from the lead. Yep, first to eighth in what's five, six laps. And that's opened up the GT5, GT300 battle. The 
final lap for the GT 500s, but we are again watching GT 300. That's been absolutely fantastic racing. Where did that two hours go? I know, here on Nismo TV, live and exclusive. You watch this on catch up later on as well. There is our race leader in GT 500, the Arta NSX. Looking like it's assured of a solid victory. 3.5 second lead over similar Honda. <laughs> Good race for Honda on the home circuit. Yeah, very, very good. They're uh, delighted. Mr. Orange Jacket will be pleased as he well, Sam. Pleased, I know you're yeah, a big fan of him. That is his car. Number eight, Arta Autobacks NSX. The question is, in GT300, who is going to be second and second third? Slightly anonymous race there for that Prius. Uncompetitive, both of them. Here at Suzuka, not quite sure why that is. Which There's is Miku unusual, there. they normally go well here. Now here's Miku, she is just about to lose another lap to the GT500. And she will finish in whatever position she is now running in, which I think is 8th or 9th now. Lord Taniguchi will have to be a bit disappointed by that result. Now will Miku get another lap in? No. And that is victory for the Arta NSX. Oh no, Miku does get another lap. A victory for the Arta NSX here at the Suzuka 300 kilometers fan festival. But look at this battle going on down the back straight. It's the blue car versus the AU Tom's car. The blue car has got in front of the AU Tom's car. Where is the number 23? Oh, he's gone off on the way in. He's trying everything. Can't. Oh, they touch. Unbelievable. Who's going to cross the line first? That's got to be a moral hazard. It's the it's the blue car. I think the Prius the... is going to get in front and stop the. the Tom's car from turning in. There we go, the Calsonic car comes out uh, on the correct side of that one. The AU car looked very aggressive on the way down into the final corner. Big last lap lunge, but the Calsonic car keeps that valuable fourth position and a great finish there. P4 for Nissan, well done. And here's the K-Tunes GT300 leader. Great result for Calsonic actually, in fourth position and a stunning finish. Serenely, essentially, coming to the finish line, as they might say at the Monaco Grand Prix next weekend, whoever wins that. But the Saitama Toyo Pet sponsored K-Tunes Lexus hasn't really been challenged too hard in this no, race. It's just worked, worked its way back up through those cars who didn't change the tyres at the pit stop, and uh, they made it look easy in qualifying, and they've made it look easy on race day. So terrific results from the... Uh, uh, from the RCF there and he comes through the final corner to take the checker flag and win GT300 and that was a fairly straightforward win but who's going to be second good look luck at with the that gap one. he's built up think how close it was a few laps ago only look at five the... laps ago look at that gap that Lexus just worked here fantastically but we need to be looking back at the chicane the Hoppy 86 takes second the Subaru third, third. Subaru there's the Subaru third. there's the Lamborghini and there's the battle for the other positions behind him. Well, well, well. And there's Miku trailing home in eighth position. Disappointing wow. for them. Victory, though, for Honda. Arta Autobacks. Najiri and Izawa. Good result for them. The 100. Number 100. Honda NSX GT. It's the car of Jensen Button coming home in the second position. So Jensen Button's second Super GT podium. So, podium ceremony. Yes. Any, any sports goods? One thing we're we're no, guaranteed. I think it's going to be one a deer. thing. One thing we're guaranteed to see guaranteed to see is a deer with it with yep. a bell round its neck. Indeed, because Suzuka I think means deer with bell round its neck is what the Japanese term is. I think it's literally is something as simple as that. Every day's a school day. Yeah. It did get explained to me once, and I'm pretty sure it's something like that. The word Suzuka means the bell around its neck. Brilliant. I really love the, 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 the kind of nod of the podium ceremony to the history of the venue. We see the Arta Autobax car running through the um, marbles on the outside of the 130R. He'll be going into post-race scrutineering where the ride height will be checked. So trying to gather as much of that pickup onto the face of the tyre to lift the car off the ground. 
this car for me, I mean, you know, you know there's the scratch card they give out on the podium at the end of each race. If you've never watched the Super GT podium, stay tuned, it's, it's different. Um, they give out the scratch card for the best performer. It's quite hard to pick out the best performer of this race. I mean, that car has been superb right through it, but so is the Arthur NSX. But just for the sheer entertainment of it, the entire GT300 field. <laughs> yes. Yeah, unusual to see the result of both classes um, replicating what we saw in qualifying. The Arthur car qualified on pole and won, and the K-Tunes RCF qualified on pole and won, which is really unusual in this series. If you're new to Super GT and you haven't watched this type of racing before, a warm welcome and hope you've enjoyed as much as we have. But yeah, normally we see uh, places coming and going and changing, and it's rare to see a car that qualifies on pole take the win that AU Tom's last minute lunge for victory oh the Arthur Autobat car has gone the wrong way uh, I think it's many right Mr. Orange right overalls of, right no running steering uh, steering lock no he's heading back to the paddock he went the wrong way but uh, good victory poor navigation yes he's, he's trying to go where the Ravens oh, no, they've oh, got no they're all it's, oh yeah, they've run out of lock yeah it is a steering lock issue look at the pit lane filling up with guests flooding through from all the hospitality suites behind the pit garages he's not going to oh there see the, Le the Lexus can make it on the lock and obviously the GT3 cars can because they're pretty easy there's Bumblebee the run up sports Nissan GTR the previous spec that's a 2017 spec car but saw that car going very slowly with four or five laps to go but must have uh, made it successfully completed and uh, as you say made it at the end and look at that waiting for his teammate to eventually turn up with the big board, first position. There's there's the car. Get through the fence. There you go. We're first. Good picture that, isn't it? So there's some very happy drivers, really. But yeah, speaking of the best 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 performance, it's hard to pick out. Hmm. Nick Cassidy. Really, really good drive to third position. Also, we get Nick Cassidy on the podium. Ronnie Quintarelli came from last to sixth before his pit stop. His 100th ever Super GT race. Uh, the K-Tunes RCF, as you said, did a sterling job at the head of the GT300 uh, pack. Yamon yeah, set up that fantastic fourth position for Team Impul in the, the He did. The I, blue I, I, I really wouldn't want to call man of the match on this one. No. So it's, I, it's been really very, very good. Well, somebody has to. It'll be interesting to see who gets the scratch card on the podium. I think the overall car, strongest car was probably the K-Tunes Lexus. I mean, it really didn't look challenged at any point, whereas the Arta Autobax car was at least pushed by Cassidy and yeah. Button. So, uh, because I really didn't pay that much attention at school, I'm not going to do any mathematical predictions to the uh, championship uh, points table, but this has certainly put the cat amongst the pigeon, and it's going to be ever so tight now as we uh, head into the month mid-season break. There's the winning drivers and their team manager, uh, Aguri Suzuki. We had um, a great... I mean, actually, we just talked about Aguri Suzuki. The, the cars he raced in the Japanese Grand Prix here back in the 80s and early 90s were, were slower than the GT500 cars racing now. Yeah, it's incredible to think about, isn't it? Just amazing. So you think back to the iconic yellow uh, camel liveried Lotus Formula One car, which he raced, it was slower. It was slower than this GT500 car. That's just incredible. But there they are. They know they finished first. And they did indeed finish. We'll see. We'll probably be hearing from both Nick Cassidy and Jensen Button at the end of the race. Though these interview and photo segments are a little bit confused sometimes. Here comes the, the Lexus has gone missing. That one GT three hundred. It's meant to be something with them. So here comes the winners' interviews. These will all be in Japanese. So we'll bring you as much as we can of them. They are in Japanese. Oh, he's enjoying a delicious branded beverage. Taste of Arta. He's happy. Was that hello, mum? Yeah. Good yeah, so he is just saying it's much better than whenever he was in GP2. 
Um, he loves this winning thing. And he really likes doing it, and he just moved up to the position, but it will be the first from the way go. Super auto back to logo on his chest there. He looks a bit knackered, doesn't he? Yeah, he's uh, definitely worked hard this afternoon. Yeah, he has been worked hard. It's relatively stressful um, just controlling a gap at the front of the field, and the, uh, the Ray Brick car did push him hard at one stage. It's pretty much what he said. He said the chassis was very good, the handling was good. He looks a bit emotional, doesn't he? He does, yeah. yeah. He's very happy about Quivering this. lip going. Yeah. Oh, he's, just, he's, he's going. He's happy. going. Yeah. He's less emotional. He's just happy. Here's a Guru Suzuki. He's a Guru Suzuki. He didn't think they were going to do it. He was just unsure. He was tense. But they did it in the end. Happy about that. And he said the Honda is better than the Mercedes, probably. Obviously. He's... That was definitely Hello Mum. Hello, my mum. They have competed. Now here, oh, finally, the Lexus has turned up. The K-Tunes racing. So they've definitely worked out they finished first. That's why they're holding up one finger. If you finish second, you hold up two. If you finish third, you don't have your picture taken. You don't deserve to, really. No. You just look disappointed on the podium. Podium ceremony, Sam. Here we go. Oh, I like the podium. When you say here we go, they've got to get there first. Oh, it's, it's the enthusiastic girl. Amy's with us. You won. Well done, she says. She really was excited by that. Um, the the Okayama Toyo Pet sponsors, not the Saitama Toyo Pet. I kept on saying Saitama Toyo Pet. It was very difficult. The battle was intense. Suzuka just seems to do that around the racing. I mean, I felt just I was going around, I even got chilly because I had to do it my overalls a little bit more. But it was so much to battle like that. But we were so quick all the way through. Thank you. Thank you. Mori Nito there. Had that massive accident last year. He did huge one. Yeah, wasn't it? And then went out, won the race, I think got past this lap as well. So, um, really good result for him. Sports by Keitunes. Keitunes is Korean pop music, I believe. Yet again, every day's a school day. Yeah. 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 So he's saying hi, yes, thank you. Thank you, she says, Amy. And now in the view of the uh, team boss, Akiyama, well-known name. Kachin's racing LM Corsa. Nice hoodies you get at LM Corsa. We, have, we need to get some Nismo hoodies. Nismo hoodie. Is Nismo hoodies a thing? Have you seen them? Have you seen a Nismo hoodie? くるのかなとは思ってましたけど、こんなにね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、
to really struggle given their um, weight penalties and the um, uh, fuel flow restriction. And there is the GT300 result. The k RCF we just saw, Nita and Nakayama taking victory over the Hoppy 86, the Subaru BRZ from R&D Sport, Ikiuchi Yamauchi at that. But the Manipa Lamborghini, Sintium, Lexus, the Up Garage 86 and Leon and Hatsune Miku, Good Smile, AMG Mercedes all battled for that victory in the closing laps. Everybody else was a lap down, headed by a Prius. Great result, though, in 14th position for the Saitama Toyo Pet Green Brave Mark X MC. That car has been pretty rubbish throughout the... Well, since it was introduced, but it's actually a really good result for them. The Sintium Lotus Evora finishing just at one place ahead of that started on the back of the grid and didn't really run because it got smashed up. Here are the championship points, though. Jensen Button and Naoki Yamamoto now lead the Super GT Championship. Just one point ahead of the Motul Ortec GTR driven by Sugeo Matsuda and Ronnie Kintarelli. Hirakara and Nick Cassidy some way back in third position. This is going to be a tight championship battle now, isn't it? In uh, GT300, Sean Walking Show still leads the series with uh, Takagi in the 55, the orange BMW, but Suboy and Matsui in the 25 Hoppy 86 have now matched them on championship points. And then one point behind them is Nakayama and Takobayashi, and then Morio Nitta, who's just won today's race, with Nakayama in that Lexus in fourth. It's going to be so tight all year now, isn't it? So tight, and uh, uh, interesting to see that the Walkinshaw M6, the Arter M6, scoring zero points today, but still managing to keep the lead of the GT300 championship. And there's the key pit stop. And there is the 86, doing a few highlights from the race. Not quite sure why we're watching the um, BRZ. Oh, this is the BRZ versus... No, it's not. This is the 86 versus the... Uh, the Lexus and then the BRZ but appears look at the time the he lost yeah there's the BRZ the of our screen there yep crucial moments in the race and this is where that big GT300 battle really got going in the mid-race pit stops lap 27 that was where the last 40 minutes of our time were spent yeah. watching these guys scrapping nose to tail and there's the key moment Miku didn't change tyre and that really cost a good small team even if they'd done for a two tyre stop they probably would have won the class Came out with an advantage over the rest of the field, but quickly it lost. There's the 86. Distracted by a, the Motor Law Tech GTR warming its tyres. But yeah, Miku, and quite rightly, and unusual to see the highlights from Super GT in the GT300 coming up before the 500 highlights, but this was such a good battle, wasn't it? Look at this. Miku holding on for dear life to the lead of the class, but we soon had eight cars battling for the lead. Around the outside, nearly got it done, went off, and the 86 gets around the outside. It just was... I watch this all day long. So could he. And then, look at this. 86 on 86 on BRZ on Lexus and everybody on top of Miku in the points eventually. But she did fight off for a long, long time before she couldn't withstand the assault any longer. The tyres failed. They didn't fail, they just went off. But into the triangle at the end. The Lexus got past Miku. Didn't really look back at that point. The race was won at that corner. But look at the battle that ensued afterwards. This was just sensational stuff. hoping we're going to get a replay of that last lap battle between the AU Toms GT500 car and the Imp Team Impel. Yes, the Calsonic car. Yeah, that was a fantastic battle right at the end. Here we see how the Hoppy car got it through. Yeah, they've given up on that because they found the podium. some hero, hero music going on so let's see what goes on the podium ceremony there are the masters of ceremony and I have no idea yeah he, he's definitely a hedgehog I'm, I'm gonna go hedgehog well I, deer is the um, he might be a deer but I, I don't know any deer that look like that and I live in Hertfordshire do, do no he's got some sort of dinosaur type things on his back but Jurassic Park is at Fuji Speedway, we all know that. He's a very well-dressed dinosaur, anyway. Oh, it's, it's an important thing. He's, he's up there with Mr. Orange Jacket, so that's quite important. Yeah, 
they're standing for the sponsors. Well, there's the winners of GT300. K-Tunes, Lexus team. Someone scribbled in the back of their overalls there. That's what happens you hang around and say, you know, you know. Cameraman got excited. Oh, yeah, exactly. 30th anniversary of Suzuka Circuit. I don't think that's quite right. I think it's actually been going on with that. But there you go. The Hoppy 86 team. 25 years for them. Not in the Hoppy 86, of course. And here come the R&D Sports team. Subaru Works team. They, they're a little bit less enthusiastic than they were earlier, but I think they now realise that played it slightly differently, they could have won this race. So if you're tuned in on Nismo TV, we've got some great racing coming up for you. Coverage from Silverstone for the Blancpain GT Series starts at 14.30, 2.30 this afternoon, UK time, that's the local time, so 15.30 Japanese time, no, not Japanese time, Central European time, Japanese time, it's the middle of the night. And the race is half an hour after that. Here come the trophies, though. It's a deer with a bell. There you go. Being presented to the winners. Don't forget, though, Micro Cup coming up at uh, 8 p.m. UK time, 9 p.m. Central European time and some other times in America. Shouty Man is here. If the Shouty Man is a man called John. <laughs> is he? Who has um, learning difficulties, apparently, but it's considered lucky if he shouts your name when you're on the podium. Awesome. So drivers consider him a good luck charm. And he really does shout some. So gold, silver and bronze deers with the bell round the neck, the traditional Suzuka trophy. And shouting away. Different colour deer for different colour positions. Mid-run deer, that is. I don't know if there are deer around Suzuka. I've seen it. Oh, I don't know. It's more sort of, it's, you know, Suzuka, as I say, quite an industrial area, quite urban. Not really deer country. Silverstone deer, definitely. Oh, yeah, plenty around there. Yeah. Uh, here, here, here's Mr. Orange Jacket to present the Arta Autobacks. Super Autobacks Award. There you go, he's showing everybody it's Autobacks. It's an official product. Little map of Suzuka on it. Double flagging there for Lexus. The Lexus drivers say they're struggling a bit. Oh, he nearly dropped it. He'd have to say, oh dear, at that point. Uh, it would have made a little tinkle as it hit the deck as well. Shouty man really is going for it today. The small um, prehistoric no hedgehog is. is looking very happy. So they, they should introduce random stuff like this into other racing series. Is it a hedgehog? Is it a, uh, a stegosaurus? Who knows? Yeah, it's definitely not a deer, is it? Stegosaurus. There was a word. There was a word. I was pretty sure I wouldn't get into the commentary this morning. I think it's more of a triceratops. So, oh, here's the scratch card. The scratch card is going to be awarded 500,000 yen. Rapid conversions going on, I can hear already. 500,000 yen for the best performer goes to... The Hoppy 86. No. Well, that's, that's man of the match for P2. Well, that's, um, well, they dropped back at the start and had a really good recovery drive, but that's controversial, Sam. That is controversial. Hoppy 86, 3,351 3, pounds, which will buy most of the mechanics a beer on the way home from Suzuka. The Shinkansen from Nagoya. They'll have to rush, actually, to get the last one, because it leaves quite early back to Tokyo. But there is a bar on the platform, and, and, and oh, there's weirdness going on now. What, what? Oh, my word. Oh, oh and they, oh win a, word. they win the cuddly toy. Or... What on earth is going on? I feel like I've taken some sort of strange substance and I'm watching something that's not actually happening. Well, they're not going to fit that on the train. There's not enough luggage space. You need, need to buy a third ticket. I know. Wow. Well, there you go. Wow. I know it's dancing away, the Triceratops, Stegosaurus, deer thingy. Hedgehog. Well. Wow. Well, Golf there you clubs, go. Cuddly toys. Blankety blank checkbook and pen. How do you put that in the trophy cabinet? Wow, this is just so eclectic. I mean, it's not anatomically correct because, I mean, the head clearly isn't in proportion with the rest of the body either. I can't believe Surely they're just going to let it sit there. You've got to pick it up. 
the well, yeah, flags and you've got your, your flags, your, your, flags, your, your deer, trophies, your autobacks. The, the, the drivers the genuinely look scared and confused. Well, they are because if they, I mean, if they take it away, are you taking away the young of whatever creature that is. I don't know. Oh, this is really is harrowing. It go, is it going to start attacking? <laughs> we, need to, we need to cut the GT500 podium before this becomes any more surreal. Um, sparkling sake next. Oh yes, don't get the. Um, Whatever it is wet, the creature. Ah, oh, you'd need to send it to be dry cleaned. It'd be all sticky and smelly. <laughs> well, I don't know how much sparkling sake smells. I mean, I've, well, you, you didn't get on the podium, and I don't know if I've ever tried it. Yeah, I, I, was, I, I, I did get on the podium here, but I didn't. I didn't. Did you really? Yeah, I don't remember having sparkling sake. Well, maybe that's why you don't remember it. I'll bring you my trophy. <laughs> was it? Did it look like that? It's right. exactly the same. Exactly the same. You've got the deer bell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we need... Oh, we should have, should have brought that with you. I'll bring it next time. Yeah. Oh, somebody's rescued the young of oh, uh, yes. the strange creature. Oh, and the Autobacks trophy. Mr. Orange Jacket obviously wanted that back. And there's there's the fans. Can we see Shouty Man? Are we going to get to see Shouty Man? There he is, the front. Was that uh, him? Blue and um, white. Stripey. Uh, stripey jumper, yep. I think he needs more attention. He's cool. So, uh, GT500 podium ceremony coming up. Here's a question for... Oh, no. First, they've got to squirt the, the sake. But there's going to be uh, trouble for Nick Cassidy. I but they pre-opened them. Look. Oh, where's the fun in that? Pre-open sake. Well, they've been warned that Cassidy isn't really capable, so and he's on the podium again, so they've had to pre-open him. That's what they're all saying. It's like, no, you've got to get down, because, you know, that's why they've opened him. Oh, oh, what's going on there? Oh, is he? He's having a moment. Uh, is no, I, it was Mario Evers Nitter was... Yeah. No, uh, ever since yeah. the, the, the young of the creature came on, you, it's lost me. So, Mario Nitter, they're taking the brunt of the sparkling sake. And yeah. Well, in the face there. He's going to stink on the train home. Arcadi 86. Well, the only person who's wet here is Mario Nitter, absolutely soaking. Can you imagine you have to go home in those clothes, though? Your mobile phone was in your pocket. It'd be all sticky. No selfies on the podium today. No, we haven't seen any podium selfies. Might be like us, Rob, though, that they've got Nokia's. This is true. There you go. Great job by the K-Tunes. I do RCF like those deer bell trophies. Still can't believe the Hoppy team got driver of the day. I still don't. I, yeah, Harold, how of all teams. I mean, we spoke about who the best the, the best performer was, isn't it? No, the we, Hoppy we, team didn't. No, we, 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 we gave them a short list of our top four. It's, yeah, Hoppy was not on that short list. Not even close to being on that short list. I don't like those overalls with the scribbles on the back. It's all a little urban, isn't it? Yeah. The Subaru drivers, though, I mean, there's there's small patches of their overalls that don't have logos on, so they have to address that for the next race. It always gives his flag away. Oh, no, he's, he's giving it to Shouty Man, I think. There you go. Yeah, he did. Brilliant. Really good. Well done. So, next up is the GT500 podium, but while they're looking for the GT500 drivers, let's look at the calendar. Next race up is the Chang International Circuit. See, it does say Chang. On the 1st of July, that will be live here on Nismo TV. That's the race from Thailand, 250km race there. 300km, actually, our, our records now say. They've changed it. Then, followed by the 500 miles of Fuji. 500 miles, not kilometres, on August the 5th. Then the Super GT Intercontinental GT Challenge, Suzuka, the 10 hours of Suzuka, that's on August the 26th. Sugo, that crazy, crazy 300 kilometer Super GT race at Sportsman Sugo is on September the 16th, followed by Autopolis, another race that always produces good action on the 14th of October. And then the season rounds out, as it usually does, at Matagi with a little 250 kilometer race on the 11th of November. But here are the winners of the 300 kilometers of Suzuka. It's the Arta Autobacks team. I think we're going to see tears on the podium. 
he almost went during the post-race interview. He had another little wobble there. Requests coming in from you on the chat. That you'd like to see some official baby creature merchandising, please. I think it'd be a great idea. Nismo merchandises. There's a bloke from the southwest of England. Uh, RJ O'Connell says, even after a 40-minute delay in a safety car, we've got this whole thing in before, on time and before the end of the broadcast window. Our broadcast window ends at 2.30 when it goes over to Silverstone for more live broadcasting. And then they have to get that done before the, the Micro Cup. There is Nick Cassidy. We laugh in the face of broadcast windows. We, we're at Nismo TV. We're on it from dusk till dawn. Team No Sleep. Hashtag. There we go. Well, Nick Cassidy there. Some some weird. There is something a little creepy about the bizarre animal in the dinner jacket. Yeah, he looks very happy about it as well. Cassidy, on the other hand, is now worrying about his uh, champagne technique. He probably doesn't realise the bottles have been pre-opened for him. Though, if I was uh, to do the CPG tour organisation, I'd suggest that they leave the champagne bottle for Cassidy closed, just so just so we can watch him trying to open it. Is our still fending off the tears? He looks very happy. I mean, it's his first race win for quite a long, long time, isn't it? Yeah. Jensen Button looking suitably. Um, Benson Jutton going, I'm on a podium again. I don't know how this works. Yeah, taking the championship lead. It's the first bell deer that he's got because uh, in Formula One you don't get a bell deer. I wonder if you're given a bell deer kind of in the back room after you. Because he has won the, he won the Japanese, Japanese Grand Prix yeah. in 2011, something like that. Yeah, when McLaren were competitive. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, there's the podium. There's the strange thing. Lovely big Nissan logo behind the uh, the podium. Mr. Orange Jacket presenting his own award. There it goes, Autobacks to his own team. For the second event on the uh, on the run. Last time his team won the GT300 category, this time taking the Blue Ribbon GT500 category. So a trophy to myself. Mm. He must be very pleased. Well, they're very pleased as well. They get to eat tonight. So Super Autobacks proving to be very super here at Suzuka. Honda 1-2 on their home track. And for a race that finished with the same top three as it started with, yeah. in the same order, really, really unusual. Speaking of unusual, I have no idea what it is. I mean, I know it's something to do with Just. the track, but I've literally no idea what it is. RJ, help us, RJ O'Connell, your only hope. He's probably turned off. He's probably finding it all a bit worrying. No, he loves this. Everybody loves it. It's just taken our eclectic podiums to a whole new, slightly scary level. Benson is a bit gutted because he hasn't got the big inflatable, not inflatable, the big stuff. Can you it, can you imagine if Jensen had have been given the young of the strange creature in the dinner jacket to hold on the podium? Well, you'd, you'd have to get that home as well. Oh. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine like customs in it? You know, when you get yeah. back to Heathrow, like. Well, I was just thinking more of the helicopter from Nice Airport back to Monaco with your bizarre creature. That, have you You'd got have a, to hang it underneath. Have you yeah. got a quarantine certificate for that? He looks quite happy though, doesn't he? He looks relieved he hasn't got it. Cassidy's looking worried though. He knows the champagne's coming. Well, the not champagne's coming. He, knows, he thinks he's going to have to open it, but he knows he doesn't. But even Jensen's looking over saying, you're going to have to go through this. Well, at least he found the podium this time. Yeah, the button's never been great at finding podiums. In Monaco, his Monaco Grand Prix win famously yeah. went in completely the wrong place and had to run back. More racing action coming up. Though. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe because if you do subscribe, we fly throw even more racing at you because so many people subscribed in the last couple of races. That's why you've got Micro Cup. Loads more if you subscribe and hit like. We'll bring you some other racing action, like the Asian Blanc Pan series. We've done that already. Okay, we're going to bring you some more action. What else can we put on? 
We're just looking around. We'll do some videos about the history of Nissan's electric cars. There you go. They're, which is actually far more interesting than you think it was because there's some brilliant technology to talk about. And I like talking about uh, Oh, supercars. There is supercars at Winton Motor Raceway. That's this weekend as well. That's probably happened already, hasn't it? Nick Cassidy's going to look relieved. We need to cut into the yeah. podium. We need to see the look of relief on his face that he doesn't have... Oh, he's just gone straight. He's just deck he's necking it. Oh, no, it's not. He, they actually did genuinely, the Keeper Tom's drivers, Cassidy, did practice champagne spraying. Oh, Cassidy, he's going for a shoey. Oh, he's going for oh, a that's, shoey. That's absolutely, oh, no, that's no, rank. no, that's just disgusting. Oh, I can't oh, believe that. Jan Mardimer has to share a house oh. with him. Oh, he's, having a, he's, he's refilling it. He's going for another one. He's going to make other people drink it, is he? Oh, he's pouring it over his teammate's head from the shoe. Can you imagine the bacteria? Oh, he's going to put it back on. He's putting yeah. the shoe back on, which yeah. is... Oh! The bacteria in his teammate's eyes now. He's going to get a horrible fungal infection. I know. It's lucky the next race isn't till isn't till July. Oh, he's straight round for the eye drops after that. That's awful. Cassidy oh. just really isn't a safe person to have on the podium. Look, now he's going to get wet all down the back. He hasn't got his shoe on properly. This is terrible. I mean, I was just saying that they'd practiced their podium techniques. They'd sprayed it. And he just goes and, you know, drinks from his shoe. It's, it's Daniel Ricciardo's got an awful lot to answer for. Cassidy's it's, not even Australian. It's fine when you're, when you're in a single driver series, but not with teammates. Do you think he's got to go back in a car with you? Oh, we're getting the hero music already. That's the, they're saying the podium term has gone on too long. I'll have some highlights for you of the race. There you go. There's there's the big wheel at Suzuka. The sun is setting. And there was some racing. It was good racing. There were some GT500 cars. Though the cameraman missed them in most of these shots and couldn't get them in focus. Here we go. There were some girls dancing. There were some more out of focus racing cars. He was a bit fed up. So was he. Then the focus came in. A bird flew by. And the action hotted up at Suzuka. The first ever running of the Suzuka 300 kilometers. Since 2010. Since 2010. Not the first ever running. The first ever running for a while at the Suzuka 300 kilometers. A tire blew up. Mikey Kovenline and spun off and crashed into something without us seeing it. The safety car came out. The NSX tried to copy Kovenline and then succeeded. A tire failed. A driver shook his head. GT300 got more lively than a badger in a sack. A driver fell asleep. Impossible in this race. Jensen Button looked worried. His car was second. The GT300 cars just kept scrapping. The Toyo Spec Toyo Pet sponsored Lexus was strong. The Hoppy 86 was equally strong. So was the Subaru, but nobody could match the Saitama Toyo Pet, Okayama Toyo Pet, Lexus. GT300. Fantastic race result for them and for the Arta Autobax NSX GT3. And they put their fingers in the air. We have been Sam Collins and Rob Barth. Thank you, team. And this has been Nismo TV. Don't forget to join us on July the 1st for more Super GT action. Hit like and subscribe and come back and join us for live Blancpain Endurance Series from Silverstone at 2.30 p.m. local time and at 8.30 p.m. 8.10 8 p.m. UK time live Micro Cup.